great challenge! He got the ball. He got the f***ing ball, you f***ing idiot! You, you f***ing referee! You are a f***ing idiot! You are a f***ing fraud! You f***ing, you, you f***ing idiot! Referee f***ing ball! F***ing idiot! He wants a f***ing ball, you f***ing idiot! You f***ing, f***ing referee! You are a f***ing idiot! You are a f***ing fraud! 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 fraud. fraud. You, you f***ing idiot! Referee f***ing ball! He f***ing won only the f***ing ball! That's a great challenge! That's a great challenge! Fuck you! Welcome back to the Top 6 Show. It's Thursday night. Thank you for that footage, courtesy of uh, Judge Mo. Uh, maybe the best meltdown I've ever seen him. All I heard was fraud, F this, F that, and bald. Randomly, just said bald. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, big up, Mo. Uh, viewers, hit like buttons, subscribe to the Football Terrace. We're sponsored again, as you can see, by our friends at Match Bingo. I genuinely mean this. It's the best game to play during football matches. If you haven't started playing it yet, it's just like bingo, but instead of getting a... You know, legs 11, number 11. I don't know what a 32 is. I haven't really, uh, you know, whatever it is, whatever the numbers are, you get free kicks, corners, goals in certain minutes, etc. Get it downloaded now. More on them later. We've got a brilliant panel for you tonight. Some familiar faces, as you can see, man like Dayo, back by popular demand on the terrace. We've got George in the house representing Tottenham. Of course, the wonderful Kate is here to... Uh, Fill the show with the dulcet tones as ever. But we have three <laughs> debuts. Three debuts on the show tonight. We've got little Connor, who I, by all accounts, is an adult. He looks very young, but yeah, he is an yeah. adult. He's yeah. on the show with us today. We've got man like CB. Who's, oh, by the way, Connor's an Arsenal fan, so everybody knows. We've got CB making his debut on the terrace, who is a Chelsea fan. I watched one of your vlogs earlier on today, bruv. The meltdown at the end. <laughs> the, the girl woke up. Yes, it was a madness. I just need to ask, what room were you in? Because that was like a prince's palace that you were in at the end of the day. Uh, so for the weekend, it was my first ever cup final for Wembley. So I was like, I got the shard for the weekend. I was like, let me make a, an occasion out of it. It didn't end well, though. Let's just say that. No, well, I was about to say, that room you were in, I thought, Jesus, I want him on the show. Maybe he'll sponsor us because there was some serious money I thought there. <laughs> and we've got, got man like Paddy Murphy making his debut on the football terrace as well. You all know him, huge Liverpool fan, huge star over there on TikTok and, and amongst other platforms as well. Welcome, Paddy, my mate. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be on. Uh, meant to be on a, long, a while ago, but that was interrupted. But we, we won't go into that, but I'm happy to be on now. More than welcome. Everybody always is on the terrace. Even people that don't like me are welcome on the terrace. It's no echo chambers. It's 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 a mantra, um, as it were. Uh, CB always does it big. Is that one of your friends, Bernie? Is Bernie uh, one of your mates? Yeah, that's one of my people, yeah. Ah, there we go. I like it. I like it. Lots to talk about today. Loads to go through. But I actually wanted to start off in the social media realm to begin with, because we're all content creators at some level. Some just starting out. Some have been established for a long time. And in the last few days, we've seen maybe the biggest name in our industry, Mark Goldbridge, very much attacked by the media, slammed by the media, lies put out about him that, you know, they made it sound like he'd kidnapped Rasmus Hoyland before doing, doing an interview. And I just wanted to throw it out to the, to the panel, really. What did, what did, what did you make of the way that they've been slammed and attacked this week for simply by the mainstream media, simply interviewing a player? I think for them, for the mainstream media, it's kind of like a culture shock. They kind of realise, okay, the traditional ways of sports content, journalism, etc., has changed and it threatens them. So the, the only way to respond is to really just slander him, try to ruin his reputation, etc. But yeah, that, you can tell them and they're terrified, man. No one's, Everyone's tired of the regular independent Guardian articles where you ask the safe questions. Everyone wants the organic stuff. Yeah, I agree. I, I I agree. I mean, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. I know not everybody likes him. And it, they, you don't have to agree with his footballing opinions. But I just think, I've said a few, a few other streams today, that people have this weird notion of, oh, look, Goldbridge is getting it. If we jump on this bandwagon and help get him removed, not that that's going to happen. You can't get rid of his platform. But let's just say he can't take it anymore and he retires. I think some people labour under this illusion that maybe all these 1.8 million subs will come and watch me instead. And I'll be as big and yeah. 
it's one of two things for me, Paddy. It's one that's probably not going to happen. Secondly, if it did, the media would then just come for you anyway. Yeah, well, I think on the media, I think, as you were saying there, it is true. It's a culture shock. The kind of the mainstream media has kind of been taken over by the social media world. And if it, the, the most key point of that is if you look at Sky Sports these days, you look at Soccer AM, that was the kind of stalwart. And now it's Soccer Saturday or Soccer Social, and it's full of social media stars and influencers. So they're kind of taking over the game now. And someone like Mark, he is the godfather of football fans online. He is number one. Um, and I think everyone wants a piece of that pie. And you can have your opinions on his on his opinions, but at the end of the day, it stems from a place of jealousy where they want what he has. Like he's doing very well for himself. And yeah, it wouldn't be a case of if he, if he goes tomorrow or his band or whatever, you, can, you aren't just going to take those because you're not Mark Goldbridge and people subscribe to him specifically for his character and personality. Yeah, but... Well, I find it. Right, I was just gonna say, I find it really strange that, like, all of a sudden, a content creator does an interview of a footballer, which we've seen many, many times. It's usually just done by bigger brands, though. You know, you get like a Pro Direct or or, or Foot Asylum or, or like one of these brands. They do it, and they'll get a content creator to interview a footballer, and it's all fine. It's all normal. No one bats an eyelid at it. The media don't say anything, and that's fine. But now that Goldbridge is doing it on his own platform, sort of trying to. You know, build his platform and open that opportunity for content creators because that's what he will be doing. He'll open the opportunity for content creators to do it on their own platforms because we've even seen people like Filthy Fellas do it with Bournemouth players. So it's, it's just really strange that he's getting singled out for doing this with Hoyland in which he was, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was back in Hoyland in the interview. Of course, he slandered United players in the past, but uh, pundits have slandered players. Uh, mm. have slandered players. It's just a part of the game. We, we've all got opinions on the game. We are going to call players out for their performances, but to sit here and throw death threats and make it like all the media throw these things at him, we're just doing an interview. It's crazy, honestly. I, I do find it's, it really strange. It's, it's, it's not. It's not the interview. It's it's really the interview is an excuse. Um, mainstream media is not relatable anymore. It's not. Everybody yeah. has. Everybody has access to information on their phone. They don't need to go switch on a TV, subscribe to a cable network, do anything. They literally can find whatever they're looking for on their phone. And because they're no longer relatable, they can't get those interviews. Like even if they get it, they're not getting the views that they want because mm -hmm. their social media platforms are not pushing as hard or are not relatable. Like people can relate to Terry. They can relate to you. You're, you know, they can relate to Kate. They can, they can relate to normal people sitting down in their homes you can see the background, you can see the picture, you can see these are normal people that are relatable, that I can listen to, who know something about football. They may not be professionals, but you know, they're good, they're entertaining them. So for for the mainstream media, they are scared, they are getting shut down. A lot of them are getting shut down. A lot of them are moving to online, <laughs> like offices mm -hmm. are shutting down. So yeah. and they can't and they can't compete online because they, they're getting in really late, one, two. They, are, they just don't have what it takes. So right now, and, the only yeah. the only way to do it is to get rid of the people there. Like, it's it, it crazy about it. Do you know what's mad? I think this is the underlying issue, which I realize. Barring a handful of journalists, Fabrizio Romano, probably David Ornstein, there's a handful of them, and most pundits, by the way. If Sky or the newspapers or TNT Sports stop employing them, they can't make any money. If every brand in the world said, we're not going to work with Rants, Saeed, uh, Red Men TV, United Stand, AFTV, those platforms and the people that own them would still have a good living and a good life. Mm -hmm. And I think that irks these people that if tomorrow, you know, some pundits like Gary Neville would be fine because he's grown such a big network himself that he'd be okay. But the vast majority, no, they've got no, they've got no influence. I, we, used to, we, we had a few footballers that came on our show once. I remember speaking to like my partners and they went, oh, they want like a thousand pounds an appearance. And I said, I'd, I'd rather not. One, we won't make that money back. No one really cares about their opinion. And I'd much rather just get normal fans who speak candidly on. I find that more entertaining and my viewers respect it more. Yes, I can pay some ex-pro that retired 15 years ago a grand, two grand to come on. But no one really cares about their opinions. If you want the people who we care, opinions we care about, they want 30, 40 grand in appearance. And we're tiny. We can't afford to do that. So I think there is that. Again, the two or three big, big names, they're fine. But everybody else in the middle, I think they look at it and there is such an underbelly of jealousy. But there's a weird comment here that says Terry's working for Goldbridge, but didn't see him uh, do that for Robbie uh, when he got attacked by fans in the media. But that's just a lie, isn't it? 
Here's multiple videos I did all them years ago <laughs> defending Robbie, <laughs> defending Flex when he was getting it. I have every step of the way, even when I did my, my thing that you see at the bottom there, Heavy D, uh, that was done many, many years ago. I have called this stuff out every single time fan channels are attacked. So let's drop the bullshit. Let's drop the nonsense. It isn't about twerking for Goldbridge. I've done it for Flex. I've done it for AFTV. I'd do it for anyone in the fan channel community, the fan media community, because I think we have to stick together. We have to stop shrinking our, our audiences. We have to stop beefing with each other. Even if we annoy each other, we're in the same industry. Take it on the chin and help each other grow. And there is too much, and you know this, Paddy, there's too much backbiting and infighting and between ourselves. When What we've really got is the mainstream media are trying to shut us all down. If they had their way, we need to all stand together absolutely like 100 percent. you're right there's enough there's enough people coming for content creators without fighting amongst each other and it just people as you we were saying before people like kind of crave off beef they think oh this is great it's views but it's just it's not sustainable we kind of got to band together because the mainstream media like it's it's funny the social media world is becoming the mainstream because tiktok is the mainstream everyone's on tiktok it's going direct to them whereas the mainstream sky sports and all that are kind of you know, diminishing slowly. Well, Sky Sports are still kind of doing well, but yeah, we need to, we need to band together and uh, and collaborate things like this and, you know, take, stick it to the mainstream. Just to piggyback with what um, Paddy was saying, um, even with Sky Sports, if you notice these days, the people that they're bringing on is the content creators, the people that mm -hmm. are making content independently as well, which is actually rattling the mainstream media more. But in terms of Alex Goldbridge, I feel like, Everyone, especially in this space that's making content around their clubs, fan channels, etc., should be supportive of him because he's kind of broke through something like that's not really regular. The fact that he's interviewing players, you never know one day Terry might be able to interview a player, you know, oh, stuff like that. It's, it's actually and breaking. Is, and, and this is it. If the fans then jump on it and help shut it down because the clubs say, actually, this is too messy, you're going to, you're, you're going to, you're cutting your nose off to spite your face. And I remember, I think it was Ricky Gervais sort of said this about cancel culture, where he said, if you try and get everybody canceled for things that are now banned, but they said them 10 years ago, he says, all you're really doing is, is guaranteeing that in 10 years time, you get canceled for something that saying today is fine and acceptable. And I don't want to go down, down that route, but obviously there's, you know, 10 years ago, you would not have lost your job for saying a man can't have a baby. Now, if you make that claim, I'm not making that claim, I'm just making a point, you from most corporate jobs in this world, you lose your job. So it's one of those things where I feel like we have to be, you know, uh, open-minded to this stuff. And fans, fans are in this space that are a little bit jealous. Even if you don't like what Mark's done, just don't comment on it. If you don't like what mm. Redman TV do, just leave it alone. Don't have to comment on it. Like, leave it alone. Lee Gunner gets it all the time where people go in on him. It's like, I enjoy Lee Gunner stuff. I, I joke about with it and I mock it sometimes, but I do that because me and him are mates. But if you don't like what he does, Stop watching him and don't share the bits that you don't like. Leave him alone. So that's just me um, on, on this stuff. But it, yeah, it, it was a little crazy. This year says content creators like Lee Gunner used to call out AFTV for interviewing Edu. Yeah, and if you went back and watched my shows with Lee, I said I thought he was wrong for that. You know, the, 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 I, I do. You know, and some people say that Mark, Mark Goldbridge now just he's, he's back in Ten Hag because he's in with the club. Have you seen what the other people on that platform say? That's an arg. It's just yeah. it's utter lies and nonsense, really. And it's just very, very bitter, um, bitter, bitter, bitter um, comments that come out uh, from that. Uh, but there we go. Um, sorry, Terry says that, but makes videos on fans. Yeah, I do. And I have a laugh and a joke. But find me a video in my fan channel review videos where I'm slagging anybody's platform off telling people not to watch them, or am I encouraging everybody to go watch and subscribe to everybody else? Don Vito, you honestly, bruv, I hope your girlfriend's not in the room because she's going to dump you after you just got owned like that, my brother. So, uh, <laughs> honestly, I might mean, be surprised if you have got a girlfriend because I bet there's a sense in that room, bruv. I, I, was about, I, was, I was about to say that. He doesn't seem like he has a girlfriend. No. Because if he <laughs> but, did, he wouldn't be talking that way. No, not 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 at all. It's just, just a weird one. Just a, just a weird comment. But yeah, look, um, give us your thoughts and feelings in the comment section, people, about this. I'm I'm going to stand behind Mark Goldbridge on this one. It's not as if that's ain't wrong either. Like if it was a mad accusation about some madness he did, then cool. But he interviewed a player. 
<laughs> it's yeah. so weird. It's so strange. But jealousy is what jealousy does, I suppose. Um, and all that. Not, not to try and sound too much like Forrest Gump. But there we go. Hmm. Speaking of Man United, I'm going to go to Paddy first on this. Are we going to dump Liverpool out of the FA Cup this weekend? I mean... I'm, I, we, I should be a lot more confident for, for this game given previous results but that game at Anfield a couple of months ago kind of still lives kind of rent free in my head with all due respect that was a unforgivable two points to drop in for our point of view uh, but you've done well I think it's going to be extremely tight um, I've been kind of saying it's going to be going to draw and probably go to penalties um, it's a weird one because obviously I want to win the FA Cup it would be nice but the the Premier League has taken my kind of full um mind mind space. And I think that could play into the game too. I think our squad is very limited. Um we have a couple of players coming back. So I think we'll be pretty strong for Old Trafford. But Old Trafford's not an easy place to go for us. Um it well it has been recently, but it shouldn't be. And I think we're kind of back to that. Lightning can only strike so many times and I don't see a hammering by any means. I think it's going to be very close. I'm gonna I'm gonna go a one one and then I'm predicting Liverpool to win on penalties. So part of me, part of me right now would take a take a one-one and penalties because we're so bad. What about a, what about a panel? I want to go to Connor. I haven't heard from Connor yet on the show. How do you see this going this weekend between Man United and Liverpool? On paper, Liverpool are the favourites. Yeah, it's an FA Cup game. It is the biggest derby in the world. Uh, how do you see it going? I think if it was at Anfield, I'd have a bit more of a stronger opinion on Liverpool. But we've seen with United they can get results at Old Trafford against Liverpool it's happened before and it's not it's not like an uncommon thing it has happened before um, I don't know I just think as much as you know Liverpool want to be going for another treble possibly or quadruple however, however you want to go with it um, I see them going for it I do see Liverpool going for it and as much as you know May United have been terrible I, I can't say it's going to be close I don't know if, if I'm being a bit boring there and I'm saying oh I'm going to give United the benefit of the doubt but Liverpool are just Liverpool in it, and as much as it was a nil-nil in the last fixture in the league, and this is going into the cup, I see nothing but a Liverpool win here. As much as you know, I want to try and give credit to United in some way, shape, or form, but they've just been. We know how United have been this season. Um, I don't know if Hoyland's still out. Is Hoyland going to be available? I'm not too sure. He, according to some reports, he's going to be fit this weekend. Him, Mason Mount, back in full training. Uh, somebody, no, Lissandro is not back until the inter after the international break. So we've got the might of uh, Money Mace coming, coming back. <laughs> Sierra had to laugh and I couldn't even keep a straight face. But Hoyland oh, coming man. back is important. Ho Ho Hoyland oh, will be fine with match fit wide. It's only been a few That's weeks. Insane. And if we've got any chance, we need Hoyland on the pitch. We, we need we need him up front if we've got any you, chance. You just see the off. games when he wasn't there. The difference, I mean, listen, the, the United attack hasn't been great at all this season. But obviously, when Hoyland left that squad out of the injury, you can just see the difference. Just just in those couple of games. So I think it will make a bit of a difference about however Liverpool Liverpool. They're gonna, I, think they're I, gonna I agree. I, I can't lie, I think Liverpool are gonna steamroll you guys. I know I saw that I I know Paddy Paddy hates to hear these things, just in, in the sense that like it's gonna put a lot of pressure on his team in a, in a game against United. <laughs> like you said, it's at old Trafford. It's happened a couple of times, but it can go either way. But looking at the performance against City, I just think this team is hungry. Like they're they're starting to get to that point in the yeah. season where they they can smell blood and and they know what they want. Um, they they're gonna go for all the trophies that they can get. And this is one that look they're in a quarter it's quarter final right this round. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So they're literally three games away from the two games away from the final. They ain't gonna slip up. I, I can't see them slipping up. Um, I, I know Salah's obviously had a few games where he's come off the bench, come off the bench, and I think this is the game where he makes his mark again. He loves a goal against United, especially at Old Trafford too. It's pretty much his home. Um, <laughs> so I, I generally see Liverpool pulling out all stops, um, walking away winners. I don't think it's gonna be a battering. I don't think it's gonna be three or four nil like they have in the past. But I do think performance wise, they're gonna completely control the game, and it's just gonna be too much for United. I think, yeah. Listen, I think Liverpool are gonna beat United, but Terry, you might need to rise. Yeah, I'm tired of Liverpool in his competitions. I can't play these men again. <laughs> if, we beat, if we beat Leicester, if we beat Leicester, we could be going to Wembley again against these guys. I'm tired of it, bro. You know, right now, right now we're just we're just the little boys to them. You know, so listen, Liverpool. It don't matter who comes in, man. They've got a coach that just knows what he's doing. Clear instructions for these guys. It don't matter if they're young they're good enough, you know, to play against this United team. Because it doesn't matter who United put in, there's still a massive hole in that midfield. But I'm just 
somehow, you know, as much as I hate United, I'm just hoping somehow they beat them. Yeah, because I'm tired of playing Liverpool as a Chelsea fan. I'm t- honestly tired of it. You <laughs> <laughs> put the words out of my mouth. That's the last thing I need. But in terms of United, um, I feel like you guys, United have way more to play for with this game. They ain't got nothing else going for them this season. The top four races a bit mm. here and there. But, you know, Liverpool are still that favourites for the Europa League. You're in the title race. So I feel like there's going to be a little bit more hunger on the United side of things. It's also a home game. So, fingers crossed, United do the business, isn't it? Like you said, bro, the, the last thing I want to do is face Liverpool again in Wembley. That broke this, sounds, this sounds a bit mad. I think I think Liverpool have more hunger. Jurgen Klopp's final season, you know, I think they're going to want to play out all the stops. I generally think they want to go for it. I don't, I don't blame it. Every club wants to go for all the trophies, of course. But, listen, United, yeah, this is the only trophy they're going to get this season if, if they really go for it. But for me, Liverpool... Yeah. That hunger is way more there. Klopp, you know, want to probably get a treble. Though, if they want to go for the quad, they can do it. Um, I think the I think the hunger is more I, Liverpool this season. I th- first. Yeah, yeah, I think you're I right think- with that. I think our our hunger is is set like our motivation is is set in stone. There's no motivation more needed than it's Klopp's last season. This is our last chance as a group because there's no certainty on one who's coming in and two how we're going to play. So. Yeah, I think the hunger is not going to be a questioning. Liverpool will be bang up for it. And having won the Carabao Cup, it gives you that impetus. Okay, we've got some of these players have got their first taste of a trophy with the club. So go on. I think this game, the longer it stays nil-nil, the more it favours United. I think that was the case yeah. at Anfield too. I think if Liverpool were to come out and score early, it could be a case of two, three, four maybe. And we've seen seven. Maybe, maybe seven then old travel. But oh. if we if we start early, if we score in the first ten minutes, I reckon we go on and win like three nil. If we don't, if it's nil out of half time, it's gonna squeak out a draw. Paddy, who who have you got? Who have you got missing for this game, man? Who do you think is gonna start for this? Like I've seen Gravel. It's gonna be pretty training. strong. Um, we're looking at pretty strong. Obviously Keller and goal. Bradley Kanate is gonna be out, so it'll be Kwanzaa Van Dijk, Gomez. Midfield three is pretty is full strength right now. Max Obasloy, Endo, and then it'll be Salah Nunez. Yeah, so we're pretty much full strength apart oh. from Kanate. And you'll definitely um, rotate yeah. tonight as well. You're winning, 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 winning the game, man. You're winning the game. Yeah, it'll be the, tonight's going to um, be the kids plus kind of, I think you're going to give Sabas Lion a Salah minutes for fitness. Uh, so, Paddy, let me ask you a With the injury you more injuries in that. Yeah, with the injury situations you guys have been facing, you've got the Europa League um, getting crunch time now. The title mm-hmm. race is heating up. Ideally, would you, would you rather not be in the FA Cup to save your legs for the, like you said, the league, that's what you're focused on really and the Europa League. See, the Europa League is a different one. Usually every year we're like, oh, no, but as you, if you don't know, the Europa League final is in Dublin. Obviously, I'm Irish, so I have oh. a good hope of being there. Please, fingers crossed. Um, So usually the Europa League is kind of like meh, but I, I really would love us to get there and win it. And we could hopefully, obviously we've sparred the Prague, we're already through. Hopefully we get a handy next round and we can kind of rest players. I think we have the squad that's capable of getting the job done, but obviously Premier League is absolutely the preference because I can't handle another. If we finish second by a point again, I genuinely might have to stop watching football because my heart is broke with this. <laughs> Especially with City to win it as well. Uh, I hope I hope if it's not us, I hope it's City because if Arsenal, I, I'm sorry, I could not no. handle that Arsenal and Arteta beating us to the title. I would get sick. Uh, you, you, know what, you know what? You know what? You know what? will come out after that, right? Arteta, Arteta matching that second one. That was a clock, right? You know what this fan base is like. Right? I know, like I that. know. They're 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 sick in the head. They're sick. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Which which fan base is sick in the head? Say it again. Arsenal, Arsenal fans. They're they're okay, mentally so ill. They're mentally ill. Okay, yes. so in so live up. So, so, no, hold on. So club club here we go. Hold on, club wins one EPL. And you don't want any other team to match Klopp's one EPL because they're sick in the head. Okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Well, no, it's that, more that, make, that... That makes a lot of sense. No, it's more that Arsenal had... They've been back. They've they've they bottled the league title last season and they're having a good season this year, but they're already speaking like, oh, this team is the best ever. We're the best team to do this. We're the best. Arteta is this. Where really all he has done is spend 700 million and win an FA Cup. I gotta respond to that though. I gotta no, let, to that. Yeah, gotta die, then I gotta use yours. Go yeah, so, so yes, you're right. 700 million to win an FA Cup. Uh Liverpool has won it once in 30 years. You bottled it to, to City back to back to back, and the season you won it, there was nobody competing against you. You literally had it wrapped up in that season by April. So what are you talking about? You've never Wait. really been in a title in a title oh. race. 
You so you're saying he's having a yes, how less, you yes. No, no, no. Yeah, hold on, hold on. How are you how trying have, to? No, hold no, no. On, hold on. In six years, how much have you spent to win it once? In six bro, years, bro, bro. tell me no, exactly. Listen. How are tell you me how much? No. Have, tell no, me how no. much you spent in no, six wait, months. I will. But, we're talking about the EPL now. Don't bring in the UCL. Don't bring. We're no, talking no, no, EPL. no. We're not, we're not in the EPL. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't do that. You're Chelsea fan. Wait. You're eleventh position. Sit there. Wait. Let's do this. Let's do this. Liverpool has bottled it to City back to back to back. And the season you won it, the oh. season you won it, there was no title challenge practically. You had the yeah. season wrapped up already. So what title race have you been in where you sit down, you've won it once in 30 years, nice. and you say to another team that has three of the same trophies that, oh, they're the ones who don't know. Man, let's stop this narrative. The real, we, we, we see the facts here. Liverpool has not been in the title race that really is that tight, except the one time that you oh, lost here. by one point. No, so no, let me respond, about? please. This what are we crazy. talking about here? Yeah, what is, is crazy? crazy. You, what do you mean, bottle? We've lost out on a title to City by one point Did, twice. Then you bottled that it. Is a title if race. Ask, that ask is like if Arsenal bottled it, that means you bottled it too. What are you no, saying? No, we didn't. Oh, you oh, were ahead. They actually won the title. They won the title. Don't try to change the They won the trophy. That is a madness. No, no, I'm not saying he hasn't won the trophy. I'm saying, but in six years, they won it once. And to turn around and say the other five years you didn't bottle it. Like for you to it's say, not like saying any second place team right. bottles a yeah. league. You can't, that, we're, you can't we are that. competing with so, hold on. So so so, so it asked not only bottles it because they were on top for the for ninety three percent of the hold season. On, hold on, yes. yeah, hold on, hold on. They were on top you of the season. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So when when you were on top, like when you whenever Liverpool was on top and City came and won, you didn't bottle it. Did you at no point in the six years were you never above City? What are you I'll talking say, about? Say, not not, um, not upright know. like Arsenal were, never. Yeah. We were it never. It doesn't matter. But were you Mario, can I ask them, you a bro? question? Can were I ask you, you a question? Because yeah. first of all, I was actually going to defend you. I was going to say, I'm not hearing a Liverpool fan come and talk about their team being called the greatest. We heard Liverpool's <laughs> team in 2019 was the best ever Premier League team we've seen. So that was all I was gonna say. But for, Dio, there's no way that you're trying to change the narrative that you did not bottle it last season. Do I'm not saying we didn't it? bottle. I said I said we bottled it. No, Hear what I'm I asking, said. I'm asking George, you. I agree. You, we bottled we it. But I'm saying, listen. No, I'm not. I said if Arsenal bottled it, which I agree to, right? I totally agree right. to that. Was there any time? That, that's why you have to listen to understand and not just. I said if Arsenal bottled it. No, no, no. I did. I said. I no, did. he did. I said, he did. He did. I did. I said if Arsenal bottled it, which I which I agree to. I'm simply saying in the six years where Liverpool has won it once, was there any time in those five seasons there, where they did there not was win one it? season? I want to say was above, a, I think there was one season bottle? where there were eleven points clear of City and City yeah. still won. And City it. still came yeah. back and won. Game in hand. Yeah. There was one season where Liverpool were ahead of them by about eleven points. Eight and eleven between eight and eleven points, and City what came a, back. I so think you're thinking of they won so many games in a row. Yeah, so let's level let's level the narrative. I agree, you bottled, but you have to agree too. You can't just turn around. Yeah, let me let me just. Sorry, sir. Uh, uh, so let me just hear from uh, Paddy for a minute. Let's go back to Paddy as it's his team. See, what he's saying is, is there's no. It, he's trying to compare it. There's no comparison. Arsenal did bottle it in the years with Liverpool. There was never ever a time in in the in in Klopp's tenure where we were that clear of City uh, at all. We've lost the title by a singular point. And if you look at each of them individual seasons, there was blatant errors that cost us that title. The Rodri handball away at Everton. It wasn't a case of. We should have won those titles. And not to mention, Man City are a state-backed sport-washing project oh, that have 115 God. charges leveled really against them. Really Let's really not know. pretend like it's a fair fight. <laughs> Let's not pretend now. Come on. This so it's not crazy. a fair fight for Arsenal too from last season. That's what you're saying. So how should it not be a fair fight for you? But when it comes to yeah, Arsenal, they bottled it. But hold on, hold on. But listen, you see, but at a point you have lost a 10-point lead to them. In some time in this six years. So you, no, no, listen, I can, put, you all, I can pull it up on screen and put it on screen. Don't let me do that to you. The facts See, I, I don't think we've ever the, been. Listen, the facts are the facts. We've, we've all bottled against Man City, the juggernaut with 115 charges. It's cool. Let's accept it. But don't just label one team bottlers when you have bottled it before as well. We've not, that, That's all I'm that's saying. That's what I'm saying. We've not. You just gave nah, reasons. You, you, did, you, you did bottle it. This, no, you, you did just, bottle it. You this just you, yeah, you, you did, did bottle it. This season, that season. This season, you, yeah, the, the, no, the season that the season that you were clear of Man City by like what eleven points. That That's not. We were never eleven points clear. When it was ten uh, points. Uh, and, and John it was like ten points clear. Game that out. And, and, There's no did chance. They, did, did they win like fourteen games in a row or something ridiculous like that? Yeah. We weren't ten points clear. Not with the same games played. No way. Yeah, yeah. They had a. You I remember had you were clear. I remember you were clear. Clear by two points. Seven points. Seven. 
Oh, so oh, so a game in hand matters now. When when Man City mm. had a game in hand last season, you all said it's not about a game in hand for us. No, Man City had a game in hand as well against us last season. So the, no, the eight points you guys are talking about, so that means officially the eight points you're talking about is five points last season. You can't play this narrative. It's so no, dumb. Are, this is the difference. This it is, is the dumb. difference. Yeah? This is the issue. What's the difference? Arsenal, Arsenal, look, Chelsea on the mud right now. We're in the mud, yeah. You guys are on a longer title drought than us, and a trophy drought than us. <laughs> you guys haven't won a trophy since 2020. We won in 2022. Let's uh, not even talk about the league. I, you guys haven't won the league I, since I was three years old. I, I, I agree with you. Listen, listen, I agree with you. But you had 20 years, four tournaments, 80 trophies to win to catch up. I still have more trophies than you. Uh, I still have this? more trophies. These, no, no, these, if you these, want to talk about these, trophies, no, no, you're, you're, you're talking, this? listen, you're talking about trophies. For 20 years, we haven't won trophies. You had four tournaments every year for 20 years. This That's is, 80 trophies. Is. You could have won 80 trophies and caught up by now, you but you too. haven't. Got, because right, you're right, not right, that good. Right, right, how many of them have you enjoyed, though? How many of them have you enjoyed? Five, listen, yeah. bro. How many, of you, how many of them have you enjoyed? I, I, I'm going to step in oh, here. No, 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 no,
I'm talking about what we've league. seen, what we've what we've both seen. So he can stay quiet. We've seen more than him. But no, 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 I don't know why that, going that, 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 that years. Well, Okay, Chelsea okay. Have more, but, true. Chelsea okay. have one more in the last few years. But this, this is the thing. Brothers, yeah. Arsenal are all over, pretty much all over Chelsea, bar Europe. So I don't know why we've got... And they have more Premier League titles this, than you. We've got more Premier League titles than you. Again, again, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to jump in. The Premier League, yes, is a new competition, but it's the league title. Man United have 20 league titles. 13 of them were won in the Premier League era, but we still have seven before it. Arsenal have 13 league titles. You have six. You don't have as many. You've won more in the Premier League era. But you That's haven't won you more said. in your history. So, but based on that logic, the Champions League format is about to change. If Arsenal win the Champions League next season, does that mean they've got more Champions Leagues than you because the format's changed? But the name hasn't changed in 10 No, no, it, 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 forget the name. The name, is, the name is irrelevant. We're talking about the format. Answer the question. If the format, if the name changes, if it's then called the Champions Super League and Arsenal win it, would that erase your two Champions Leagues, boys? Yes or no? No, but you can say, yeah, they have more would it, than... No, 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 answer the question straight. Would it erase your Champions League? I never said yes. I never said yes. Exactly, exactly. So let's not the do that. The problem with what CB is saying, and the reason why Chelsea fans push this narrative so hard is because they generally have no history prior to... I was to... waiting for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Let, let, me, let me just give you... Let's be real. The amount of trophies you have prior... The amount of trophies you have prior to Roman is pro you can count on one hand. It was literally that you had about you, four or five trophies in about one hundred and twenty years. So, so that's so, the reason why you guys come here and you and you love to big up the fact that oh yeah, we've won more recent. Yes, you have. You've been successful over the past twenty years, but that, that that's not the whole of football. Football's been going on since the eighteen hundreds. So you guys can't come and sit here and try to discount everyone because. Every other team was doing bits in the 1900s. You're the only let team let here. Me, that me, me, me. I get it. I get it. I get guys, it. Guys, guys, let me just control a bit. Got, let me get a done on this, and then we're going to move on. Yeah, it's just it's just mad because Roman saw them sides there and said, "Now, nah, Banda, let me go to Chelsea." That's what it was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I'm going to get some super, some super chats that have, that have come in here. Uh, Chelsea have the same amount of relegations as league titles and less titles than Everton. Uh, you can never be our big bros. Lol. Uh, is what uh, Tun's got to say here. Uh, only fans of muddy clubs did Arsenal, um, Porto uh, hate alongs. Yeah, th those are mad to be fair. Uh, Chelsea, Chelsea fans adopted the IQ level of their league positions. <laughs> Oh, deluded. <laughs> <laughs> that's, funny. that's funny. That is funny. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Fantastic tweet. Um, 5th of March 2019, Talk Sports uh, put out an article saying Liverpool have bottled a 10 point lead over City. So, literally, the year before you won it, Paddy. I cannot I believe I've just seen Talk Sport used as a credible source. <laughs> Insane. It wasn't. It was not. Well, we watched the league. Well, we watched the league. We watched. I watched it. Come on, Terry. Buddy. Terry. I... Terry. Actually, actually, check this because I'm. Sh I'm sure it wasn't seven points. It was more than that, bro. No, see, I think what I think what it was. It was ten points, but there was a game in hand, and two. then the game in. Sorry, two I'm games in hand. Yeah, some, something, something like that. Yeah. But what, mm. what I will say it's not in defense of Arsenal per se. It's this: is that we, we've seen it this week with. Um, when Arsenal won yesterday, I saw Danny Murphy three weeks ago say that it's better to have European football and Premier League football because it keeps you in your rhythm, keeps the, the some of the fringe players get more game time. It's better for you in a title run. When Arsenal went through the other day, he then said, I don't know if this is good for Arsenal. They've got to play two games a week if they think they're going to be able to play. I think fans have an issue on both sides where one minute games in hand are an advantage. The next minute they're a disadvantage. And I think it's about keeping the the energy the same. Uh, for everybody is, is what I would say. But I think both teams fail, fa failed from relatively commanding positions over Manchester City. You have a four-point, five-point, six-point gap over Man City and with two months to go, throw it away. I think it's right to, to, to call you a bottle job. Um, it's what we've done... It's what we've always done in, in football, if that makes sense. It's, it hasn't just changed the, now. The, the difference is Arsenal have set that record three times. And last, last season, it was 93%. 93%. No, I, I, do, I, I do understand I don't that. Know, it was how, how, can you break, how, your, how can you break your own record three times, bro? What's that? I love, I love I how you keep using percentages. I love how you I think, Liverpool, I think Liverpool and Arsenal both have the highest record number each. I think it's three or four each 
of being top at Christmas and not winning the league. I think it's three or four each they both have. It's uh, interesting that both those clubs. Uh, they're just a bougie Spurs, bro. They're just a bougie Spurs. Yeah. Come they on are. now. Come on now. No, 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 Come no, no. That's too far. We're going to move on from this, guys. We can keep going around in circles forever and never move forward. Uh, don't worry, Don. You won't beat Leicester, brother. It's only worried about Liverpool. I was going to say earlier, Don, when you said you're hoping on United winning. We're so weak at the minute. We couldn't get a job as doorman at Mothercare. Legit. And you're out here. Shows how far you've fallen. <laughs> that you're hoping that a really shit Man United beats Liverpool for you. It, we're in the mud, bro. Both of us are bathing. At least it's good for our skin, though. We're in so much mud, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, Leicester City uh, better than Chelsea. They, listen, everyone's hoping Leicester City win that game. If, if you make it through to the semis, we want Coventry and we want Leicester in that semi-final and we want Newcastle. Like, if that happens and Man United win, we've got all those results, I'd be buzzing, but I doubt it. It's going to probably be Wolves City, Liverpool, Chelsea in the semis, most likely, I would say. Uh, Liverpool fans are so embarrassing. Why do you keep making out they never spend any money? Low one title in 30 years. Shame people say that like compare I, i'm gonna it's net spend compare the net spend we don't spend really like other clubs we spend within our means and we've done it the right way whatever you want to whatever whether you want to argue it or not Klopp has done a better job at liverpool than guardiola has done at city if you revert rever, you reverse the roles pep could not do what Klopp's done but Klopp could easily do what pep's done and probably better wow there we go yeah. uh this liverpool uh takes five minutes explaining how they bottled it I mean, it's a podcast, so yeah, it's got to take some time, Southpaw. <laughs> uh, this is what uh, you get for bringing TikTok creators. <laughs> Whoa, respect. Whoa, respect TikTok, man. Come on. In fairness, you're doing a better job of explaining yourself than Hamza, and uh, Hamza does, to be fair. Uh, big up, Hamza, if you're watching. Um, I'm glad I got extra syrup uh, for all this waffle. Big up, Michael. I like it. Uh, Chelsea is who's big brother. Lol, that's delusional. The club has uh, that was sold for one pound league titles doesn't change because the name has changed is what Wayne says here. Uh, Liverpool bottled it uh, so hard in the 2018-19 bookies here in Australia actually paid out Liverpool title early, then had to pay out for cities. Wow, that's a madness. That's a madness. You cost the bookies, but well, that's a good thing. Uh, you, you all say Liverpool won Premier League Make that make your minds up then. Well, I don't. I say one title in 30 years. Yeah, Liverpool don't have one, they have one Premier League title. Yes, but they don't have one league title. That's absolutely right. But yeah, the league titles, second most successful team in the world. That's why I don't want you to win the league. Uh, Terry being biased regarding Arsenal's lack of European trophies because Liverpool have more than United. That's not true, though. Arsenal have two proper European trophies, and it's a fact they don't have one as big as the European Cup stroke Champions League. But they won the Cup Winners' Cup in an era where the Cup Winners' Cup was massive. We're not rewriting history on the terrace. They won the Intercity Fairs Cup. And I only learned this the other day. I thought what, that was a Timbuk trophy. What, it Terry, wasn't. You, just five minutes ago, they said that we have no heritage before Roman, but we won the Cup Winners' Cup under Viali as, um, as player manager. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say, I didn't say, I, I didn't say that. Had the same amount of trophies you can count on your hand. One European hand, trophies, though, prior to Roman. Well, you did, and Chelsea, and Chelsea did have that. But the Intercity Fairs Cup that is on Arsenal's list... That was what the UEFA Cup was, which is now the Europa League before it was the UEFA Cup. So this notion that Arsenal don't have any European trophies makes me laugh. It's because people don't understand the history of football and they say Inter City Fairs Cup. I mean, it does sound like a friendly competition, but it isn't the Audi Cup. It literally, I mean, there is one on Spurs' website I love that you guys list as a trophy. It's the, it's called the Costa del Sol Cup <laughs> on there. And that's what I thought the Inter City Fairs was. I thought it was some random yep. thing, but it's legit. But yes, I'm not being biased. I'm just being honest about the history of football. And I'm not going to downplay Cup Winners' Cups because Fergie won two of them when it was very hard to win in the 90s and the early uh, 90s and late 80s with Aberdeen, by the way, where he beat Real Madrid in the final. So from my point of view, Real Madrid with Aberdeen, I'm not going to undo that history because it would. this is what I say about trying to win battles. I'm not going to undo the history of the greatest manager in, 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 ever to try and point score against Arsenal. Because Sir Alex's legacy and Man United's legacy means more to me than point scoring against Arsenal. It's dead banter, in my opinion. So, yeah, I'm not being biased in any capacity. Um, and by the way, by saying that, I increased Liverpool's European legacy because they've won some of the smaller European trophies as well. So, come on. 
Let's, let's, let's just speak about football here. I know we got I know we got called out the other day by Big Steve that you can come on the football terrace with bad football knowledge. And by the way, viewers, I think you great guys have tremendous football knowledge, but it's not the case. It's not the case. Big and, up Big and, Steve and, and the Terry, Big just, Six, by the way. And Terry, just quick, quick, just a quick um tip for people that didn't know what the cup winners' cup was. You had to have won a trophy to actually play in it. It wasn't first, second, or third. If you didn't have a trophy, you yeah. weren't playing in that tournament. So essentially, only three teams from England would go into Europe each year. A winner of one of the, the domestic trophies, the team that yeah. come first in the league and the team that comes second. And you couldn't be in the champion. I mean, theoretically, it's easier to win the Champions League now from the perspective of you could come fourth and you're still in the Champions League, where back in the day, you had to win the league to get into it. So those teams like Liverpool in the 70s that were winning it all the time, they not only had, they had to win their league all the time to be in it that regularly. Even if you won it, you didn't get re-entered into it the next year. So th those achievements, we can't start undoing the history of football to win battles in 2024. It's never, ever going to happen. Not on the terrace anyway. You can do it on TikTok. I, I, with I agree. I agree. I agree. <laughs> um, but yes, score predictions for Man United versus Liverpool. What are you going with, George? 3-1. 3-1 Liverpool. Okay. Mm, I'm going 2-1 United. I like that. What are you saying, Con? Yeah, sorry, Terry. I'm going to go for a, go for a 2 0 Liverpool. Fair enough. You ain't coming back. Um, <laughs> it's, it is. It is. It's CB, what are you saying, bro? I've got 2 1 United. Go on, son. Bro. Like that. Dio. Dio, sorry. I've got, I've got uh, 4 2 on penalties, United. Ooh. What are you going with, Paddy, mate? 1 1 and Liverpool to win 5 4 on pens. And man like Don. 2-0 Liverpool. 2-0 Liverpool. Viewers, I'd like to get yours. Remember, you, you can follow all these games at the weekend using Match Bingo. It's a great game. You don't know what you're going to get on them either. It's a bit like it's a bit like Forrest Gump. But twice I've mentioned him today. You get your bingo card. Some of them are free. Some of them you pay a very small amount for, like two pounds. And you have lots of random elements that need to happen it could be a corner in any any minute ending with three it could be at least two players to be booked on man united at least one goal to be scored with a header by liverpool and if you're the first person to get a line you win money if you're the first person to get two lines you win money if you're the first person to get a full house you win money it's an amazing game there's no stress with it either it's not like putting on a bet where you've got to think who's going to score next what player should i pick it can be a little stressful especially when you do a first time goal scorer and then they're on a bloody bench because you did it two hours before kickoff. This is great. It's perfect. There's no stress to it. Get it downloaded now. You do have to be over the age of 18 and in the UK to use it. Get signed up to match. Bingo. Uh, the, the other big game uh, in the FA Cup this weekend, uh, City take on Newcastle. Um, anybody see an upset in this game at all? No chance. No. Not at all. Especially with Aaron, um, Anthony Gordon being injured as well. Uh, getting that like, in transition, I thought the only way they really get um, beat City is just through the mid block and then getting them down in transition. So, with Anthony Gordon out, chances are slim. I'm not gonna lie. They've still got so many other injuries as well. So I many, there's no way I can't. There's no way I can't see Newcastle going to win. Then they've been shocking anyway. They're not the Newcastle when Eddie Howe first came in. Uh, they're nothing like that anymore. I think they're gonna. Mm -hmm. I, I can honestly see that being a four 0 is, that, like is Gordon definitely out though? Because I saw he got called up for the England squad. Yeah, I don't know why he got called up. Because yeah, I thought he yeah, was. I think, I think they're going to replace him. They, England love doing that when players are injured. They call him up. But I know I've heard his injuries not as bad. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not as first fit. It's not as first fit. He no, might. He might be. He might be available. He might be. Yeah, but even so, he ain't, he ain't enough to PC. He ain't enough to PC, man. Paddy, I've just, I've just seen. I don't mean to sideline on Terry's show, but you've gone really strong tonight against Sparta Prague. I know. All yeah. your probably all your main eleven that you've got currently is playing bar, I think Clark. Yeah, Kelleher, Kelleher, Bradley, who's it? Kwanzaa, VVD. No, it's not Van Dyke. But who's playing centre back? Oh no. Bradley Gomez. Oh yeah, Gomez. Gomez. Bradley. Uh, Kwanzaa. Sorry, Kwanzaa Gomez Robertson, and then um Sobislai, Endo, Clark, Salah, Nunes, and Gakpo. Who's, who's playing Gakpo? Yeah. And Gakpo. That's Go surprising, man. I, we'll I don't know. It's risky, man. Up. If we get any injuries here, man, Jesus, bro. We we have this thing where, we, yeah, but that's the thing. We play players that don't need to play in these in these 
dead rubber games, let's be real, and then we get an injury for a big game. So hopefully everyone mm. comes through fit and we win. We should win pretty easy. Going Thanks. back to the city, city, they're, they're in. They're sort of in their form, especially after the performance against Liverpool. They need to pick a win back up. Um, they need to show the league that they are the team to be feared. Like because that performance was a bit lackluster. It was a bit uh, like you're looking at players like Harlan and the KDB and. They were smelling the pitch up a little bit, just a little bit. Like, of course, we know the levels that they set and we know what they can do. And we need to see that back from them, especially in this period where we know they've got Arsenal next um, in two weeks time. Obviously, in that, after the international break, I think they need to send a message because I know City, I think they've got this record where they come back from international breaks. They're unbeaten with Pep or something. They've never lost or they always win. It's one of those ones. But still, Arsenal are in good form. Um, they, they're not going to be scared of City at this moment in time unless City can show them something to give them a reason to be scared. Because at this moment in time, they shouldn't have any reason. They beat City already. City aren't looking their best. Their best players aren't in their best form at the moment. So City need a performance and they need to show up. And I expect that to happen this weekend against Newcastle, no doubt. Yeah, I agree. I can't see anything other than the City win. You know, Arsenal didn't look their best, though. I mean, I've been gushing about how good they've been all, all season, but I thought they looked average against Porto, and I thought they looked pretty average against Brentford as well. Um, mm. I don't think they looked their best at all. But In, in my opinion... But, that, but that's, that's, the thing about, that's the thing about football. You can't look your best consistently 38 games all season. Yeah. If, you, if you think that you're going to do that, you're going to burn out as a team. That's but, the yeah, I, would say, two, yeah, I would say, and you're on my channel when I said this as well, yeah. I the way we play... Because we play the same football we play in the league, we need to change our style of play in, the, in Europe because it's yeah. chalk and cheese compared to the Prem. It just doesn't yeah. work. I don't know why it doesn't. I don't know what it is. But for some reason, whenever we go into Europe, and we know, oh, it's the history of Arsenal. We know Europe's always crumbling. But I'm just watching the games this season, and even in the group stage now. And then, listen, I know we beat you know Lons, you know high scoring and all that. Uh, but obviously, the away fixture wasn't great. I don't know what it is with Arsenal and Europe, but for some reason, and I do say. Now and then, I don't see a plan B with Arteta. Sometimes I don't know what so, it is. So, so, so Connor, let me make in that, knockout in a knockout. Let's see in a knockout in a knockout tournament like that. Even like the FA Cup or like the Carabao Cup, it's knockout. I think the problem is if you still play the same style you play in the league, where you're you're trying to rack up points to win the trophy, you might mm. fall short. If you're going to go into a knockout game, if you want to go in there playing a deep block away with them, so that you don't they don't score against you. Like you put out your best defense team, you don't try to go for it. And then when they come to your, your turf and your patch, you get your one goal because you know your pitch, you win, you knock them out and you move on. It, it doesn't have to be pretty. That's what Porto came to do against Arsenal. And I and I and I and I'll say this when the thing is though, they didn't play a low block though. Hold on, no, 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 no. It, it doesn't matter what they play, they didn't come to the way Porto plays, if you go look at Porto's history, the last six times they've been in the Champions League and everybody who's knocked them out, only Liverpool in 2018 has beaten them 5-0. Everybody else was 1-0, 2-1, 1-0, yeah. penalties. That's how Porto is. But this, this is very true. I mean, so, a lot of people, know, a lot of rivals of Arsenal have wanted, strangely wanted them to get into Milan. It was kind of a thing that's been across socials. <laughs> into Milan, who most people predict to be exponentially better than Arsenal in Europe, and would smoke Arsenal, beat them 1-0 over two legs last season on their way to the final. So I do suddenly think that, again, I'm not saying... I, I look at the, the remaining eight teams. Sorry, I wasn't listening to that run to the bathroom. I haven't quite got onto this, but we're here now. I look at the remaining eight teams, and I have Arsenal between fifth and sixth favourites to win it. Between fifth and sixth. And I think that's fair. But this idea that because they only got past Porto on penalties, that means they've got zero chance of progressing through the next round. I just think that's... Huge exaggeration, in my humble opinion. Hundred no, percent. I, I would even agree. I, I think it's just it's being mm. football fans being fickle because we all know it's, it's 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 the luck of the draw. It depends who you get. I do think for Arsenal though, the biggest thing is I don't think their team is ready to play yeah. at Real Madrid, a PSG, or one of the one of the big clubs who are going to have like. It's going to be all that build up into the game mm. is one of the biggest games that this team's ever played. The, the young boys against the experienced veterans, like it, it will be a very big game for them that I don't think that they'll be ready for. So they probably would favor a draw, even if it's against, I think they would favor a draw against City or Dortmund or Atleti, one of these three teams. Any other team they get there, I think it's going to be too big of an occasion. I think, no, I, I think I've said too much for them, but I think they could do a, a Barcelona. And if I think if you guys drew, drew Barcelona in the quarterfinal and you beat Barcelona, 
that could spearhead you guys to winning the trophy just off getting that demon off your back. But the Barcelona side right now is very weak. I think Arsenal are much better than them. The oh, style Barcelona. of play is similar. They're not very physical. So that's that, that caters to you guys. I feel like you guys have difficulties with a physical side. But if you guys were just... Your technical ability is way clearer of theirs. You guys play a similar style of football. If you was to beat yeah. Barcelona, which is a big name, you've got that off your... You know, you beat them and you've lost to them in the final. You've lost to them countless times around mm -hmm. the 16s, quarterfinals. Getting that off your back... I think it will spare you guys to win the trophy. But if it was an Atletico or something like that, I don't see you guys getting a result, I'll be honest. Yeah, man. In fact, mm -hmm. I think for, for mm -hmm. me, you know, even the first leg when you lot played Porto, it was very clear, like, this, the, the game plan that Arteta set out, these guys were just nervous. You know, you could see it was a lack of, of lack of experience. And even the other day, like I've said, I'm only looking at older guards, Gabriel um, and, and uh, Real, that, that really sort of stepped up, and Ben White as well. Everyone else, Saka, another stink fest. You know, Trossard was stinking out the place before he scored. Um, Havertz was good off the ball, but on the ball, his touch, what was going on there? You know what I'm saying? So these little intangibles are things that Arsenal fans like to ignore. I know your team's good on paper, but you still got to go out there and play the game, bro. You know what I'm saying? And when it comes to the Emirates, I know you lot are rocking and stuff, but when Porto came, let's be real, they made it their home in that first half. They were the better team in that first half, you know? Um, first 10 15 minutes, your fan base were looking nervous. It was quiet in there, it was library settings until Trossard got that goal. You lot are getting anxious, so it all depends on who you lot get next in it. I think Arsenal, you know, like I said, they, they 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 could go on to do something, but I just don't see them beating the big boys that have more experience in these competitions. I think they're still lacking a lot of experience, man. Um, it, to, to go all the way, look at Man City, look how long it took them to finally, finally do it, you know what I'm saying? So, and and they had they had arguably better teams at that time, so. Yeah, I think Arsenal, I think they're, they're, they're a long way from it, man, but... I think that's fair, though. If they go out in the next round, then you won't be bantering them too much then because they're not expected to, right? <laughs> what do you mean, bantering them? Of course I'm going to be shameless about it, but yeah. I'm, I'm going to be... I have to so, be real. I have I to be, I some, people saying like, some people have said they're the worst team remaining in it. So if they're the worst team remaining nah, in it... Nah, 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 well, I wouldn't say that. that okay, so they're like one of the bottom two or three teams. So they get Bayern Munich, they get Real Madrid or Man City, and they get knocked out. It's been a successful Champions League season then for them. No, no, no. success is a strong word. Okay. Hey, Terry, Terry, what are we doing here? No, success. No, the only I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking. So, so again, if they're not getting, if you look at them as being the fifth or sixth best team remaining, that means you don't think they're better than Real Madrid. That means they've got as far as they can go based on their quality. How can it not be deemed as as successful as they can be based on their quality? No, a success would be if they was to beat one of those heavyweights as an underdog and then left maybe they made oh, my oh my days oh my days like you literally so beating, beating a team that's better than you is success now that's surpassing wow. expectations that's, that's, wow. that's the heritage wow. of the league. what is the definition what is the definition what is the definition of success the two champions of what is the definition of success i'm sorry but the only wait 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 we're not going to do this winning the champions league is the only way to have a successful Champions League campaign. Any but, other thing is but you have simply said, but you, no, but you have no, but you have simply you're not said, find, you're not going listen, to the listen, Champions listen. League. Just to oh, we're stop, here, stop, we were stop, here stop. for the party. You can't you're talk, just to, yourself when you, you can't talk, you can't talk through both sides of your mouth. You can't talk through both sides of your mouth. You just said Arsenal is not good enough to win it. So, and we agree with you. They're not the best team. They're not going to win the Champions League. So, no, listen. It's so, word if, success. No, no. Can you, let me finish. Chelsea Let me finish. Let Chelsea, 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 you know, you know what success is about because you got to the final because you had the capacity and the ability to win it. Fine. That was success for you. Do. Pause. But no, no, no. That was success let, for Chelsea. Let him make yes his no? point, guys, please. That was success for Chelsea. For an Ateta, who is his first time in Europe, never been to Europe. He doesn't have any experience in Europe. Hold on. Hold on. You can shake your head all you want. It will fall off your neck. Ateta, <laughs> who has no experience in Europe, four years Actually, as a manager. He managed Man City for one game. He didn't manage it. Well. They got knocked yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. So and um <laughs> and, and and for for a young team that we all we've all said don't have enough to win it. If they make it to the semi-final and they get knocked out, for them on their level, that is success. You can't change that for them. You can't turn around now and say, Well, based on if you don't win it, how can you say they're not the best and then you say they have to win it? Like, listen to what you're saying, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I, so, so I, that, that, what, what, what would you say? What would you say? Like, like you're breaking what, my brain, yeah, literally Dale, breaking I, I, my I, brain. I, I, that's I, what I, I, Dale, is. Dale, I, I, hear, I, hear, I hear what you're saying, yeah, but obviously, like, how Arsenal fans are going to look at it, right? Is if they get a big club, for example, like a Bayern Munich that smoked you, man, in the past, Barcelona that I've dealt with you in the past, obviously, these are different teams now, innit? 
But as rivals, we're gonna look at that and say, okay, can Arsenal actually do the job? If you don't, if you don't actually beat them, cool. People, rivals might look at it a little bit differently and say, listen, these guys have got over that mental block of beating a big club. That's in, not what in, you would say, though. That's not no, what rivals say. Let me tell you what they'll no, say. No, Bayern I'm, I'm didn't show up. Yeah, but, Bayern yeah, but, didn't show no, up. No, no. Arsenal Dio, got lucky. Dio, Arsenal Dio, got lucky. Dio, 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 yeah, I'm, lucky. Dio, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what I would say, bro. Because I could be shameless about it. I'm talking football now, yeah? I'm telling you what I would say. If you don't go on and beat Bayern Munich or you beat, um, like I said, um, a Barcelona, for example, teams of European heritage, bro, that's mm-hmm. going to go down and give you a little bit of, not saying all this credit that you want, all this respect that you want, but it will let people know, like, listen, these men... Cool, they're serious, isn't it? Yeah, about their business. Don't, don't, end don't. of the day, end of the day, how, 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 the way the reason why I still look at you lot like as little boys at the moment is because when you lot drew Porto, yeah, your whole fan base was celebrating. My boy was ringing me, ah, we drew Porto, I'm gassed. You know what I'm saying? I'm so happy. I said, bro, this is this is Champions League. I know you lot haven't been in it in a, for a second, yeah, but when it comes to the knockout competitions, don't look at it on paper too much. There's too many intangibles, yeah. You don't know what's going to happen, right? Don't. Teams aren't going to just does come Porto, out there. Does Porto, Porto, have, does Porto, Porto have European Porto, heritage Porto. or not? I'm just asking a quick question. Does Porto yes. have European heritage? Yeah, but my, po- my point is, my good, point is, good, majority, so majority, on, majority, majority of your fan base thought it would just be a walk in the park. And you had to beat them. You had to beat them by penalties off, is a point that I'm making. Off, and that's off, Porto. And that's and that's so, Porto, so, right? So done. So, so done, right. So right now, right now, penalties, hold on, hold on, penalties is part of the game. Please don't don't bro, say I'm, by penalties. I'm not, I'm not saying you had to beat them by penalties. Listen, like yeah, like you, we were bro, you like keep we saying, handed. You keep telling people. You keep telling people to listen to understand. So you listen to understand as well. Yeah, what I'm saying, right? Go on. I'm saying because it's not making bro, any bro, sense. That's why I'm it asking is making it is making perfect sense. I said your fan base when you drew Porto were gas and was going to be a walk in the park, and clearly it wasn't right. So what I'm saying is you lot still have a long way to go to get the respect that. You want in Europe is what I'm saying, and if you beat yeah, a team like a Bayern and, Munich, if you beat yeah. a team like a Bayern Munich or like a Barcelona, then people start to look at it a little bit differently. But and as it is right now, and Don, and Don, and Don, and Don, and sorry, let me just jump in again, and and that all makes sense. I think it's absolutely fair what you've said there about Arsenal, but then you get comments like this saying they are playing the underdog card, pathetic. We can't sit here and say Arsenal have no European heritage; mm. they're the second or third worst team left in the competition. And then if they win, and then say that you can't play the underdog card, you're literally calling them well, Terry, underdogs. You're you right? picking no, and I'm, what, wait, no, no, I'm not. You're picking, I'm picking one narrative. You're you listen to because there's also, like you know, we've got fans like Egal. Egal was doing compilations. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about Egal. George, let me finish. I'm talking about your opinions on this panel. What I'm hearing is Arsenal probably won't go any further. So I've said, therefore, if they do, they're not going to get back. I get the shameless banter that will always happen. I understand that. But when it comes to general football talk, we are saying they're pretty much, depending on the draw, they've pretty much got as far as they can go because that's the level they're at, which means there's an element of success to that. The reason I, say, not, the reason I say that is this. Spurs haven't fouled if you come fourth, have you? No, because we didn't, we didn't expect to finish fourth in this season. Well, no one expects Arsenal to win the Champions League. Yeah, but I no don't... one expected Spurs to win it. But when we got to the final, we got battered by everyone for being bottlers and being this and being that. And yet uh, no, we think, overachieved even got, getting got, to the ba- final. We failed. You got ba- hang on, but you got battered by people because your manager dropped the guy that got a hat-trick in the semi-final for an unfit Harry Kane. That, for me, that going back and remembering what my match reaction to that was like, that was where the criticism came in. It was like a potch tinkering moment again, where it was like, why did you do that? It was more that that element, that decision was looked at as as bottling it. And in the final, you didn't really turn up. You didn't really lay a glove on Liverpool as an example, but it was still a successful season based on everybody's expectations of where Spurs would go. And real football fans recognise that. And I just find it really interesting with Arsenal that everyone's kind of predicting them to go out of the next round. But I, then, at the, same, but then out, out the other side of their mouth, saying, but it'll be failure if they do. But then that means you, if it's failure, that means you think they're good enough to get through this round, but you're not saying that either. And I'm confused. But why is that though? What, what is this about Arsenal being top down? They're top of the Premier League. The Premier League is the best league in the world. Yeah. Arsenal yeah. can beat anyone on their day. I don't know why people are saying, yes, in terms of Champions League pedigree, they're right down there. Don't get me wrong. But they are one of the best teams in the world. They are top of the best league there is. They can give, a, I think the only team actually 100% better than Arsenal in my opinion, is still Man City. I think, obviously, you have to look at City. City are the only team that I think I, I would back to beat Arsenal. I think Arsenal can beat anyone. But even them, I, think I, think it's the fact, I think it's the fact that we haven't been in the Champions League. I think it's the fact that we haven't been in the Champions League for so long that people instantly yeah. think, right, Madrid, bang, they're going to they're gonna smash them instantly. Let's go, bang, they're going to beat, they're going to slap them instantly. 
And I, I can understand that. We haven't we haven't played against these teams for a number mm. of years now, so I can understand that. Um, that, that for me, it's first, that though, Connor, it's because a lot of the panel we never said that Arsenal wasn't good enough. Like Terry, you keep freezing, yeah, saying yeah. we said Arsenal the fifth or sixth worst team. Uh, we never said that. We Ooh, simply that. said that. No, uh, no okay. one's. Wait, wait. I'm, I'm so, quoting so me. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, so let's, let's break it down. That's so fine. Let's wait. break it down. Then let's break it down. Wait, wait, let me finish my point though, so you can understand what I'm. What, what okay, we said. Cool. What we did say was that. Ask the occasion of facing a bigger team is going to be too big of an occasion mentality-wise. The intangibles that we know, we've seen Arsenal are not ready for those occasions. Yes, We've never once said that on a one day, on a knockout game, that they can't beat any of these teams. Because if we're being okay. honest here, Barcelona, Real Madrid, okay. PSG, see, they're all a far cry from where but, they okay, were. Okay, years okay. Okay. So we I, so I, I understand all of that, but that still feels like two things. When you make a prediction on how far Arsenal are going to go, you are looking at how good they are at football. And you are putting the untangibles into it. And I've done that all season. It's why I have Liverpool as a favourite for the league. So let's break it down. Are Arsenal favourites over... Who are the favourites in your opinion? Man City and Real Madrid. Man City, yeah, Man City, Man City famous. And Real, and Real Madrid. So that's two. Who would you put in as third favourites? Arsenal, for me. George? Mm -hmm. I generally don't... I think the rest Jim, of the team... Jim, okay, let's do it. Who do you think are the third... On, on, look, looking at all the teams I and their intangibles, the third favourite? I would go Bayern. I would go Bayern. 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 Who, okay, who would you put fourth? That's a toss-up between anyone. Mm. The rest of the teams, none of the, the none of the other teams have. So, you, so you think Arsenal have at least got a fifty percent chance of getting through them? Which that's pretty good odds. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good odds. I think so. Yeah. Okay, but Terry, yeah, but the thing is, you're, you're, I think you're missing the point. Like I'm Arsenal's not. mentality, Arsenal, okay, Arsenal's mentality, right, is is unpredictable. Yeah, like I said, because these guys are still young and inexperienced. Oh okay, yes, yeah. you're, you're, oh you're, 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 get, you're getting mad, but there's clear. I'm evidence. not getting mad, I'm just, I'm you are, I'm, you are, I'm you are getting mad. There's clear evidence. What, what, what was your world class boy doing the other day? What was he doing the other uh, day? And what was, Arsenal, he, what was he doing the first day? Arsenal, 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 Arsenal's mentality, yeah? Arsenal's mentality. We it, it, faced it, 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 listen, dumb, dumb, dumb. Every game, every game, listen, hold on. You keep saying what, what has, what has Haaland done in the last two games? The world class Haaland that they've locked up in every game that he's played last two couple of games. Oh, no, 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 please stop. No, no, please stop. 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 Every player has played. Hey, stop, stop. One you, at you a time, Chelsea guys. Fans, you Chelsea fans, you Chelsea fans do this. Every player has their off days and their bad days. They need to step mm. up in big games. And if he had an off day, he had an off day. Mm. But you cannot use that one game against Porto, who we all know is a very difficult team to break mm. down. That Inter Milan, hold I, on. That Inter I've Milan, and other, listen, listen. And much. Inter Milan and other bigger clubs have had problems with. You can't use that one to be the yardstick for his entire season and what he's achieved already throughout the entire season. It's like me saying right now that Son is not a good player because he didn't show up in one game. I would be I stupid never, to I say never, that. I never, I never, no, no, I never, I never, I'm saying, listen, Dom, Dom, you said what was your star boy doing? What was yeah. it? Like, you, you can't sit there with that kind of logic. It doesn't I, make I will sense. sit there. No, 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 I'm jumping in. I'm jumping in. I want to go back a bit because we're going to miss a really good point that you made, Don. You just said, you're saying I'm not getting it. Right, we'll come back to that point in a minute. You said I'm not getting it. I'm sitting here and staying, but the way you guys are talking, so then I've, I've gone in to break it down so we can get the facts. You're making it sound like they have a much lower chance of getting through this next round than the other seven teams. So George has put them in around fourth, but joint fourth. You've then said their mentality is unpredictable. So basing mm -hmm. it on, and whilst you want a straight answer, basing it on their unpredictable mentality, how good they are as a football team on their day. The criticism you've made of, of their of their star boy <laughs> depend. I know it depends on who they get, but what yeah. are the where do you rank them out of the eight teams remaining now to win the tournament and therefore get through this round? Where would you rank them out of the eight? I'll probably say mid, like fifth. Okay, so probably. fifth. So again, so you, you think that you think there's four teams that are better than them and three teams that are worse than them? That, that's that's pretty fair. So that depends on the yeah. draw now. So if they get the three teams, four teams that are above them then they're expected to go out. If they get the three teams in your mind that are below them, they're expected to go through. I think that's I think that's fair. That's what I yeah. want to understand. But what I feel like people do, and this is why we have, why podcasts are better than the TV because they're longer and you can go into this. It's sort of one minute, what I'm hearing is, I don't think that, you know, that their mentality, I don't know if they can make it. I don't know how they're going to get through. Well, okay, would you say it's failure if they go out of this round? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to understand why, because they both, it, it feels like talking out of two sides of the mouth. Now I understand you a little bit better now that we've delved into it. And I agree with you. Yeah. I think they're about the fifth best team remaining. I would put Dortmund. I would put, I'd actually put Barcelona behind them. I don't think Barcelona are very good at the moment, even though they've got the heritage. I'd put Dortmund, Barcelona. There's one other team I'm forgetting. PSG? P 
maybe PSG, but then they've got the Mbappe factor, but they just crumble all the... Again, we can talk about mentality. You can't yeah. be talking about mentality. Yeah. I saw a Spurs fan tweet earlier saying there's, there's like seven European elites and Arsenal are the imposters. I thought, how can you put PSG in anywhere near the word European elite? None of... We'll all laugh at that. So I put them around fifth. Um, at the same time, that doesn't mean those teams that are below them can't beat them. Uh, what I find interesting with Arsenal is that so many people are writing them off. They don't have the pedigree. They don't have the ability to get through the next round. But yet, if they go out, it will be painted. Forget the shameless banter. I'm talking real football talk. It will be painted as abstract failure. Now, if you want the banter to work, you've got to do what Paddy's done and say they're the second or third best team and praise them a bit. And then when it goes wrong, your criticism hits right. You can't say a team's crap. I'll give you an example. It's like Will Smith doing a joke about a man being a cuck. It won't hit, will it? Because man's a cuck. <laughs> you can't say Arsenal are crap and then go, ha, 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 you went out, you bottled it. It doesn't work. It don't hit. It's not good banter. Yeah. Sorry, 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 my, my, sorry, my, sorry. I, get, I get that, yeah. But just to go back to the point that I was saying to Dale, yeah, about, about your, your star boy, yeah. The reason why I'm picking him out is because I keep getting told he's world-class, People think I've got an agenda and they, they fail to listen. Like oh, you, you, say, do. Listen you do have understand. an agenda. Yeah. I like Saka. I, can, I think he, he can become world class, but he is not world class. The other day, and another abysmal performance in the first leg, one dribble attempt. Yeah. The whole game, right? The other day, got locked up by what was his name? Wendell, whatever it was. Wendell. Yeah. Saliba, I believe this guy's generational. But I'm sorry, I've seen mm. numerous shaky games of him this season, bro. Yeah. Gabriel's been better than him. And the other day, he was shaky again. Do you know what I'm saying? But. You're, you're, you're looking at it, you, you're struggling to understand constructive criticism and you're getting defensive straight away, but you're not listening to what I'm saying, right? right? These Some of these I'm guys saying. that you guys, some of these guys that you're putting on a crazy pedestal, right, haven't showed any evidence as of yet that they're going to have this mentality to beat the Bayern Munichs or to beat the Real Madrids, okay? Because like I said the other day, that performance but, cool. You uh, not went through. Dom, you, Dom, you, we oh, have oh, the high, oh, we have the best oh, attack oh, and the best oh, defence oh, in the league. Oh, I'm, I'm, talking, I I'm, talking, I'm talking about the Champions League. Why are you talking to me about the league, bro? You said you didn't mention the league, Don, but you said he's had numerous other poor games this year. What poor games are you referring to? The Champions League or the league? Oh, in, in, the, in the Champions League when they went to... Which one? Lons away. Was it, was it Lons away? The team, yeah, the whole team performed poor against Lons. Yeah, what are you yeah, saying? Yeah, what are you saying, Dom? He's one of them, though. It's a team Hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Hold on. No, no, no. No, hold on. If you're putting if you're putting certain men in certain categories in certain conversations, don't try run away when people have high expectations for them. Nobody's yeah? running away from anything. Don't oh, running away because you're trying to say you're trying to say, Don't. oh, yeah, but everyone else was bad. Well, no, rise. His world Don't, class, but, right? because people rise. are calling him world class. Not rising. But Dom, hmm? Dom, because people are calling Saka world class. Because people are calling Saka world class. I personally, now the watch I get ruined in the chat. I personally don't call him world class because I believe you have to win. Major honours, not 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 saying like James Milner's world class because he's won stuff at Liverpool, but I feel like you have to be yeah. an integral part of a team. Yes, bang on, perfect. To be world class. So watch how I get ruined in the chat for saying that. <laughs> but because some people call Saka world class and because he has one bad game, well, listen, you can call out other games in the season, I understand that. Because he had one bad game and he missed out and he was bad against Porto. I don't believe you can fully rival into him because everyone calls him world class, and that means because he has one game. Bad yeah, but, game yeah, but, yeah, but we're talking. About, we're talking about the. We're talking about the Champions League here, where we've spoken about the intangibles. And part okay. of the intangibles. Part okay. of the intangibles. Oh, hold, hold, well, on, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on. Let time, guys. Let me Dom finish. And we'll part, of the on. part of the intangibles, yeah. Odegaard had it in abundance the other day. Yeah, he literally created that goal from magic, bro. That was a magical moment. Yeah, that is what the Champions League is all about. And and so in, in certain games, you need moments like that, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? And for me, like I've said, I haven't seen, I haven't, Saka hasn't shown me no, that role so far. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you, I want to clarify, Don. In the Champions League, he hasn't shown you in, that yet. In the, champ, in the Champions League, bro, yeah? And, 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 even, and, even, and even in the league, even if you want to talk about other evidence, in the league when it's been crunch time, we know what time it is in Saka. Well, hang on a minute, no. Hang, hang on a minute. 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 In the last few weeks where they have, Clawed back a five-point lead, beaten Liverpool, gone top of the league, created that goal difference in the running so far. That has delivered in a number of, in a number of those games. Now, I want to ask you a question about Saka. You're criticizing him for his first two performances in knockout football. Yep. How many good level performances does he need in knockout football before you will drop this agenda? So, how many times does he need to have a seven and a half, an eight out of ten game? plus contribute for goals and assists for you to turn around and go, I'm leaving Saka alone. What's the benchmark for you, numbers-wise? Oh, so how many no, times... It's, it's, you, 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 you rip it apart for two games. 
Is it one game, five games? To, how many does he need to deliver it until Don goes, I'm not mentioning Saka anymore? Bro, I need to see it consistently. My, my point mean? here... Put a, my point put, a number, put a number on it. How bro, much is consistent I, for you? Bro, consistent is, is a good number of games. Good number of games. I don't see no, it consistent. What's like, that good number of number. games? A what number. is that number of games for you to say, do you know what, you he's proven it to me now? Okay, okay. No, cool. if I'm you, not. I'm okay. trying to set a standard. Yeah, he, okay. He's that's, that's, a standard. He's not a standard. Hang on, one yeah, at a time. Yeah, but, yeah, but the thing is... Yeah. On, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, respond oh, to George. Don has set a standard by saying in his first two knockout games, he's shown me nothing. So he's made two games I a standard. I so my I question is, if, if after two games you can be heavily criticising him, and it's your right to do so, how many games of delivering until you stop criticising him? Give us a number, Don. Bro, if he performs in the next round, yeah, in both he can't of, give a number. He can't give a number because he has an agenda, man. Let him finish, guys. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let me let me, let me land my point. Yeah, if in the next game he does what Oldegaard does, right? I'll say, listen, he he performed really well. I'll big him up the way Oldegaard did the other day. If if Saka performs like that, that's not going to now mean that he's world class. But I'm going to big him up for that, right? For me to say this guy is world class, I have to see it consistently for a longer period than, than this just this season alone, Terry. Just this season, this season ain't going to be enough. I understand, I understand that. So if you have to see it for a longer period of time, that, that basically means that no amount of good performances for two or three seasons is going to convince you he's world class. Then why would you then ride out and, and criticise him when you haven't allowed that time to lapse for you to make your mind up properly? No, no, no. What do you mean I haven't allowed that time to lapse? I've already allowed well, that time you, to lapse. You, you, class you, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. If you're gonna class let, to me. Hang on a minute. If you're going to allow... The, you, but you've got to wait to see if he's world class so he can meet your consistency barrier, right? You just mm. said that. Mm -hmm. if, he's got, if you've got to wait three seasons in the Champions League to work out if he's world class, why are you criticising him before he's had the time to deliver for you? He's bro. My point is, these Arsenal fans put him on the pedestal and they call him world class, right? Is my yeah, point. I don't fans, know. I, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Your, your opinion. Your, your, your opinion. My point is, I am not surprised with the performance he put out the other day because he has many of them, bro, in the league as you well. You call Mudrid world class. You, Chelsea fan, call Mudrid no world way. class. No way. No, that's did. not true. He, he called him world class. That was a lie. That was a lie. Terry, Terry. Let me just say something. Terry, let me just say something. Let me just say something, Terry. Don't finish his point and then we're going to move on. I, I am not surprised. Not I, 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 I didn't call Mudrick world class. He's lying now. Yeah. Okay. I am not surprised. I am not. <laughs> cool. Bring up, bring up where I've called the Mudrick world class dial. Yeah. And DM me as well after that. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, Terry, I am not surprised with the performance that Saka put out the other day because you already know my take on Saka. I'm not going to get into that. Yeah. He's not think I've got an agenda. All it is is I think he's a good player, but for me, over 90 minutes, it doesn't influence the game enough. Yeah. And away from goals and assists, there's not enough that I see from him. Right. I've. I, I've, like I've said, I've grown, I've grown up on different types of wingers, right? But my point is, more majority of the fan base believe that he's world class. Yeah, there's uh, there's a minority that don't think he is, in my opinion. Yeah, from what I've seen online or whatever, people say don't generalize the fan base. All I'm saying is, if you're putting him on this pedestal where he's your star boy and he's your he's your talisman, you're saying he's hitting all these numbers in Europe. I mm -hmm. expect him to be doing the same in Europe, but I am not seeing it. But I'm not surprised by it because I know what he is as a footballer. Okay, Don, are you done? They Don, are you to say very they to guys, very guys, guys, to guys, I'm gonna go to guys. Stop, stop. I'm gonna go to George, and then we're gonna move on from this subject just because right, of I'm interest right. of time and everything. Yeah. Go on, George. Yeah. I was literally just gonna say very briefly. The only reason why Saka's been very singled out for these two performances because these are probably the two biggest games of his career so far. You might want to count the FA Cup final call yeah. many, many, many years ago, but this is the big. These two games have been the biggest games of his career under Arteta, so that's why he's been scrutinized so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And listen, he even came out and said he even came out and said it. He, yeah. it was a poor performance himself. Yeah, he said it himself. Yeah, I, I, yeah. So I don't get why that was defending him. No, 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 no. Or... That's not what I'm. That's not what I was. I was defending. You refused to hear what I was saying. I simply said, even if Arsenal fans want to put their own players on the pedestal and call them world class, that's what fans do. We're asking your opinion, Dom. You, what does Saka <laughs> have to do to prove to you? Listen to the question that he is world class. Not, not because of what Arsenal fans have said. No, of okay. course I'm going to big up in, my boy. In general, listen, in listen, general, listen, in listen, general listen, for me, dumb, like I dumb, said. Dom, let bomb, me finish. Bomb, let me finish. Bomb, I will finish. big up my boy. I will big up my boy. Everybody here will big up their players in the Fair team. Enough. Fair mm -hmm. enough, right? We, we all do that. I mean, you're going to big up Mo Salah. Everybody will big up their boys. Um, If you ask me what does Mo Salah have to do to become world class, I will tell you what I think he has to do. How many games I think I need to see him playing and at what level he should be playing at. You haven't answered that question. What? what does Saka have to do to prove to Dom that Saka is world class? Simple. Bro, I need forget to see. Ask my I need, I need to ask hold on. This is what I need to see. I need to see Saka getting involved in the game more over ninety minutes. I need to see Saka take on his fullback more over ninety minutes. Yeah, I need to see Saka have a good performance away from the GNA because yes, he puts up GNA. No one can, no one can take that away from him. 
yeah? But end of the day, I don't see enough of the guy over 90 minutes okay. to the point that I'm making. I, in, I really in, terms of, in, terms really tangi- in, in terms of tangibles on that, because it has to be saying tangible, because you can just always say, oh, I didn't think he influenced enough. What would that look to? What does that look like in terms of numbers, dribble attempts, dribble succession? How many passes into the final third? How many is, is, are there numbers that go behind that? Uh, Otherwise, it's just wishy washy. Uh, does that put, make sense? Put it this way. Put it this way. No, 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 okay. Put it this way. For example, when he played against Sheffield, yeah, he that that was good. That was a good performance. When you lot played against um, Wolves, he had a good performance that day as well. There's been a couple games this season when you lot oh, come so, back. So all you've got to do, good. viewers, and that's fair, for, and that's fair from Don. All you've got to do, yeah. viewers, is go and look at his numbers across multiple measurements. So pass completion, how often he lost the ball, how often he won the ball, dribble succession, through balls, crosses accuracy. Look what those numbers were on games that Don thinks was good. And then every time Don says he was bad, you compare the numbers. And then that way you work out whether Don's... No, 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 no. no, 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 no. (laughs) But that's how you work out. No, Don, let me finish my sentence. That is how you work out whether anyone's eye test is accurate or it's wrong or shrouded by bias. So, for instance, if you say today he was brilliant and you say why, the other way he was twining up that fullback and he attempted six dribbles, completed three of them and had 39% cross succession and got an assist. If the following game you say was awful, but he completed more dribbles, crossed the ball better, set up more chances and goals, you're going to have to break down as to what. Like, do you get where I'm coming from? So there has to be a tangible number especially for yeah. an attacker behind yeah. what a good performance looks like. Otherwise, you can just keep moving the goalposts forever in a day. Yes, can I say something to that then, yeah? The other day when 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 um when Arsenal were playing, I checked it on a... What's that called? The, 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 the data one? What's it called? Sofa score. Um, yeah, uh, yeah sofa, sofa score, yeah? Saka had a rating of 7.9, which is higher than Odegaard, and he was stinking at the place. So end of the day, take all these stats and out of a pinch of salt. Stats come in secondary, bro. No one's gonna come to me and start t- showing me numbers and graphs as if my eyes are lying to me. You're not gonna gas. No, that's, that, but that's what, not true. But that's not true, is it? Is if I turn around, it is true. If I turn, he had the highest. He had the not... highest rating. Hold on, Terry. Okay. Let me finish. Okay. He had yeah, the highest rating. Ratings, the but you don't look. Don't, don't forget sofa score and their ratings. It's awful. But you can look at someone's statistics. If you say Saka had a bad game and he did nothing, but you can prove with eye test. I can prove to you with eye test and statistics. He completed the most amount of dribbles. He can make the most amount. He created the most amount of big chances in the game. He won possession back more than anybody else. He barely lost the ball. If my facts of how he performed outweigh, if you say he didn't do anything, and I can prove he did, how is your eye? How can how can a, how can a bit of factual information not undo your eye test? That's where bias comes in, bro. You can't you uh, can't turn uh, around and say uh, that. You, but but then that's just then you're never going to get to the end of this conversation. And it's, yeah, it's because, a great because, debate because it comes it's a great, error. It's a great de- it's a great debate, but I never want to see you defend a Chelsea player with stats again, bro. Ever. No 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 <laughs> yeah, no. Do that because I use, I use, I use, I, no no no. I use I use stats as secondary, bro. You're telling me yeah, I should list all these games and then people should go check the numbers instead of watching the game. We're not doing that. But based on your criticism, so if you turn around and go, he's crossing was poor today, but his crossing accuracy was at fifty percent, which is higher than his average. Your eye test fouled. Yeah, but you, that's that's specific though. That's me being specific. If I'm being no, specific about, you have, why are we counting out goals and assists? Then why are we counting out goals and assists? I didn't count them out. I didn't count them. Dom, he's off the side. I said. I, no, I, I don't know why we're going to say that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop this conversation now because yes, I want to move on to the super chats. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it is this. People are saying I'm just doing this because it's Arsenal. No. Go back and watch my videos from a few years back about Rashford when everybody said he had bad decision making. What did I tell everybody to do? List what his bad decisions are and how often he does them in games. And then we'll start watching matches and we'll note down when he's how often these contemporaries make those mistakes. Lo and behold, no one ever came to me with a list. Terry, because can I say something quickly? Yeah, last, last, last time I checked, Kate, before you come in, last time I checked, yeah, I, I heard Terry before um, Saka dyed his hair back to black, talking about how he's, it's like how he's reminding you of someone that plays for your team. Oh, I, definitely, I, I've definitely, I, I, again, I definitely, I kept going back. But, but, but now, but now, but now we should on, revisit, revisit Don, them. No, 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 Don. For me, I've seen him have bad games and I've criticised them. What I'm asking you to do, because you've got a, a real big, and it's fine to have an agenda against Saka, you want to hold him to account, I find when you're holding anybody to account, there has to be a, a level they can get to that's tangible and measurable and, and to a degree achievable for you to change your mind in life. You can't, serve, like it's, you know, I've had this argument with people before. They go, I don't like Kai Havertz. What could he do to change your mind? Nothing. Then it becomes a dead debate because it doesn't matter what he does. You're never going to like him. You've no. got to set parameters yeah. for you to say I was right or I was wrong. I, surely. I, I, always, I, always, I always give an example of the game against France yeah, in the, uh, in the World Cup where Saka was our best player. Yeah. Saka has the ability to do what I'm asking from him, Terry. That's the point. I'm being harsh because I know he's got the ability to do that, right? Yeah. Whether it's Arteta t- t- telling him to invert or whatever, bro, 
leave all of that and just do your thing. Run at your man constantly. Yeah, I hear That's that. It. Uh, I'm gonna go. Sorry, uh, Kate and then Paddy. Sorry, Kate, Kate, asked first, then you do Paddy. Go on, Kate. Um, just quickly, first of all, I don't think it matters if he's world class or not because everyone's got a different different definition of what they think is world class, oh. right? But what I will say is, Don, I never thought I'd meet anyone who hates Arsenal more than Tottenham fans, but your agenda against <laughs> Arsenal is unbelievable. And if you can't see that they're a great team this year, then you're deluded. Whether you think Saka's world class or not, the salt I'm hearing from you is unbelievable. You waffle on. You waffle on about your players, Enzo Fernandez and God knows who are absolute average, and you'll sit there and scream about Arsenal and rant for the last what feels like three days about Arsenal when your team sat in 11th. Your hey, agenda with the Arsenal is unbelievable. You've got to try sometimes when you come on a show like this, Don. Don't think I'm patronising you because I'm not because I've only been doing this five minutes, but you've got to try and be a little bit unbiased. I literally and said, I literally, this is unbelievable. Well, we're not going to do that, Kate, because I'm criticized. I'm giving constructive criticism on Saka. I literally You're said, not. And Kate, literally came out and said, when we when we played Man City, Arsenal, if they're serious, will go to the Etihad and they've got a chance of beating Man City. Why am I going to have that take? I was I was arguing with Chelsea fans last season that were saying this is just a fluke from Arsenal. I said, no, they are serious. When they played us in pre season, I saw a big difference and I could see something. Yeah. At the beginning, when Arteta first came in, I was arguing with so many United fans, bro. Um, th there's there's a guy called Cameron, one of my boys. He comes on the show. He doesn't rate, he didn't rate, rate Arteta from the beginning. I said, I can see what this guy's doing. Yeah. Mm. Give him the players and you'll be able to see a difference. I know I, I know Arsenal are, are, are a good team, but what it is, they don't like to hear the constructive criticism. As soon as you give any constructive criticism, it's Dumb. hate. I want to I want I don't want to I don't want to sit on this way much longer. Sorry, that uh, I'm gonna go to Paddy, yeah, then we're gonna move on. Go on, bruv. Yeah, well, I do think there is a danger of an Arsenal agenda forming here, absolutely. However, while I can respect Arsenal are a fantastic team, I think the world the word world class is bandied about far too easy these days. Right. World Great. class used to mean nice. like the top five players in their position, even mm. just the top eleven in the mm. world. Saka has not performed on the world stage at all at a consistent level. He's absolutely right with that. However, his ceiling is definitely potential to get there. Mm -hmm. And when Arsenal go and win a Champions League or win a Premier League, then the world-class conversations can start. But ultimately, on the biggest stages of, of his career, he's bottled it. The Euros final, missed the penalty, the Porto games, he stunk the place out. He's a great man for stat padding against the relegation fodder. Fair play to him, but we haven't seen it consistently enough on a world <laughs> stage. And that's what world class means. Paddy, Paddy, they put him next to your boy. My man got three away goals last year, you know? Three. Yeah, crazy. L it's listen, crazy. guys, viewers, let us know your thoughts and your feelings. Love that debate. It was great. Jessica here with a very interesting comment. It says, no, Terry, there is no thing that dictates I need to change my mind via parameters. This is just a random idea by you. So you're telling me that Terry Flew has just invented the concept of a new piece of information changing someone. Fuck me, I'm a genius. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fucking right, hang on, fucking someone called a Nobel Pe fucking Nobel Prize people. <laughs> Terry Fluers has just invented the idea of changing your mind. And that there has to be parameters. You know, I can't say my strike is shit and there's nothing that you can do to change my mind. There has to be tangible achievements that they can get to. And I don't like the whole he has to move me type thing, because that's subjective at the end of the day. Some people think Peter Andre is a better singer than Michael Jackson because of subjectivity. Uh, thank you, Kate. Uh, tough uh, to, uh, to slow. Uh, Don is definitely delusional. Uh, Don's not delusional. Don's got his takes. Don's a good guy. Uh, Don, did Haaland have a bad season last year? Statistically the best striker ever, but did he pass your eye test? G uh, GA doesn't matter, right? He, he, you know, he doesn't pass pass my eye test, but at the end of the day, he do, he does he does what he's there to do: score goals. Mm. <laughs> That's what he does. That's what he's there. Saka, Saka, Saka is our high, Saka is our highest goal Saka. scorer. Saka is our highest goal scorer in Arsenal. Okay. Right now, we have the hold on. We have the best attack, best defense, and second highest goal scored in all of five European leagues right now. Seventy right behind Inter, who has scored seventy four. So do the math. If Saka is our highest goal scorer, we are best attack, best defense, second highest scoring team in Europe across all five leagues. And you're saying he's not like what? What other? I didn't say he's not performing. No, no, no. I'm saying what say other? No, no, no. So I'm saying what else do you want him to do to show you? That's all I'm asking. Like, I've been saying it already. I'm not going through it again. I'm not going through it again. He's answered already. We're not, not going to go through it again. Uh, Arsenal fans seeking validation from rivals for their players is funny. It just shows how insecure they are to jump up, jump the gun on their players being world class. I don't think I don't think they're asking for validation. I think they're asking for back up your point and what can change your mind. I think that's fair in a, fair in the debate because this isn't calling Don out. Fair play to Don for actually saying something. 
a lot of shows I do when people make statements, I ask them what can change their mind and they do not want to answer. And they do not want to answer in 2024 because then there is video evidence of when you have to change your mind. And a lot of people don't want to do it because they want to run the agenda. So I say fair play to Don. I say fair play to Don. It's easy for me to change my mind because I've seen Saka do what I want him to do. You know Mm. what I'm saying? I saw it last season, bro, at the beginning of the season, bro. Numerous times. Uh, classic Don, delusional and rambling on. Guy probably thinks he should be a pro footballer because he passes his own eye test. That's clearly <laughs> bias. <laughs> I don't think Don's like that, but there are a lot of YouTubers that are like that. They think because they've got good techers, they should be pro footballers. Uh, oh, if you God. have to say, give me exact stats to convince a player is world-class, that player is not world-class. Simple. Yeah. I agree with that, but that isn't what I said. What I've stated is if you say a player gives the ball away too much and he's given the ball away on average 10 times less than all his contemporaries in his position, then I believe the facts outweigh your eye test on that. I think that I do believe that stats and eye test have to go in conjunction. But if your eye test says one thing and the stats and the facts show you something completely different, I think you'll be, I think you're shrouded by bias. People do it all the time with um, Mo Salah. They ignore so many great elements of him and they focus on one or two bad things and they ignore all the good statistics that are around him or they lie about his statistics as well. But he's not creative, but he creates more chances than most other players in the league in his position. So it's just, you, you've got to hold, stats are important as well. Anyone that says they're not, just wants to be biased for me. Uh, Saka is top three in the final third uh, past succession in Europe. It's a good stat. Um, forward, backwards or sideways though. So I'd ask d- deeper questions on that. Arsenal fans, relax. You will get all the credit you want the day you win something. No, they won't. Because no one ever does. They, won't. they will never give it. I don't ones. think Saka is quite world class yet, but Don is waffling about Saka not rising. Since he's been 18, he has consistently carried us. Speak on Saka's uh, past Europa, World Cup and Euro performances. We've gone through it again. When you lot had to make top four, he did not rise. When you lot had to win the league last season, man's missing penalties against West Ham. You know, man's, man's getting scared towards the end of the season. He didn't rise. Let's mm-hmm. see if he rises towards the end of this season, isn't it? And we could have a different mm-hmm. conversation. He, he didn't rise the other day either. Yeah. Uh, shout out to, to the, the uh, to the top panel. Uh, big up to Kate as well from Aguna. Proper level-headed fan. Why is Don always here hammering? Uh, ain't you... S- uh, you ain't top six. All all jokes. Uh, big up uh, TFT. Thank you, oh, my bro. Hammers. The hammers. The hammers. The hammers. Ain't the hammers. Six. Sorry. 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 Uh, Arteta has messed up by not focusing on domestic cups. Teams right win big trophies normally have a run to the final and big games. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. I don't know. Uh, nice. To, nice to, to to DC. Sorry. Nice to see Don still. I think he's still waffling and ranting. Jealous agenda. Uh, Don needs Valium uh, spitting crap um, like they're facts. Don, Dude, this, guy, Don, this guy's think I hate him, you know. I actually, I actually like Saka. I just don't think he's world-class. Don, if Champions League knockout performances equal world-class, is Odegaard world-class then? I think what well, I think Odegaard right now is performing at a world-class level, but he's not world-class yet. I think he's performing like, at a world-class level. I'll be mm. real. I hear that. Uh, the hype around Arsenal, um, when the last time they were even... When was the last time they were even in a final... A uh, big game at uh, Klopp from the word go Liverpool at the first season. I mean, Arsenal did get to an FA Cup in his first season. It's probably not the best thing to attack him for. Um, but wait, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. just shook his head when I said that about Odegaard. Yeah, if you remember Ramsey, remember Aaron Ramsey, he was performing yeah. at world class level at one point as well, but he wasn't world class <laughs> at that point, was he? Mm. He kept banging in goals week in, week in, week I- out. Sorry, go on, go on. Oh, yeah, sorry, Kieran here says, great show as usual, bro. Hope to see you soon. Don, the Chelsea legend. Big up, Kieran. Hope you're well, bro. Uh, to everyone, who do you Fold. feel has has to be City's best player this... Who's been City's best player this season from uh, Larry? Foden. Foden, 100%. Yeah, Foden. Foden. Player this season. Akanji's well. been good, but Foden, I'd say. Yeah, uh, what this delusional Paul fan is saying is that Ranieri wouldn't have won more at Liverpool because Leicester couldn't compete with Liverpool. Would have won more at Liverpool because Leicester couldn't compete with Liverpool. Stop playing the victim to Pep. I, bro, I was waffling. If you don't think Jurgen Klopp could do the job Pep Guardiola's done at City, I don't know what to tell you. Here we go. Uh, on the 30th of December 2018, Liverpool had played 20 games uh, and were seven points ahead of City. Yeah, Liverpool bottled the league, is what uh, Uche has got to say here. Thank you, Uche. 
Uh, teams that play attacking football will have issues against Arsenal. We are uh, we are finally overcoming teams that play anti football. We all, we only we'll only get better is what Spencer believes. Uh, this is uh, Arsenal first year back, youngest team in the tournament. Some of these Spurs and Chelsea fans sound like people uh, from Talksport um, moving goalposts uh, on our objectives. Is what uh, Alberto says. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe we need more level-headed guys like you, Alberto. Then. Maybe we need more level-headed Arsenal fans on the panel. Like you. <laughs> I think I think Cons and, and Day are pretty level-headed. Uh, uh, haters are gonna hate. Um, I'm just not gonna shake shake it off. Chelsea and Spurs talking about Arsenal when they are not in the damn thing. They are roasting us about making top four. Debbie here says, for the first time, four Barca former players are in the Champions League. I don't give us a chance. I do believe. Big up, Debs. Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Uh, according to uh, Deo, Todd B is also successful because he's never owned a football club. You can't compare him uh, to the past just like you don't for Arteta Champions League. I mean, yeah, it's a it's it, your success if you ever buy a football club. You know what it takes to buy running it is a different <laughs> entire thing. No, it's a different entire thing, bro. Think about it. If you today are able, you you know how hard it is to to buy a club. If it was that easy, Qatar would have bought Man U. All this while that we, we get the logic now, but it doesn't make it true. No, no, I'm not. What I'm saying is. Success is on different levels. Sorry, you could be a lawyer. Level. It's a different type of lawyer. No, no, no. no, no. Success, no, no. Success, <laughs> success is on different levels for different people. So you have to understand that what is successful for Arsenal at the level that they are right now is what we will count as success. If there are teams better than us and we can't beat them and they beat us, but like, you know what? We made it to the big table. We lost. Let's go back, rearm ourselves and come back again. If you, if you, if you, if you don't get knocked down and get up and win, then what are you doing? You're asking the team that has not been there for years to come in and just blow everybody off. You said it yourself. We're not good enough to win the Champions League. So why do you expect us to win it? That's what I'm saying. Like, why are you saying if you win it, you bought If you don't win it, you bottled it. But you're saying we're not good enough. Those two but things cannot you're coexist. You got guys that are world class. We don't agree that they're world class, but you believe they're world class. I never said they were world class. No, he said Arsenal fans. He said Arsenal. Listen, I can hold my players to whatever standards, right? I choose because that's the team I support. You can do the same for your club. I'm asking you, what can my players do to prove to you that they're well, working? Like, what, what Dom's answer, what Dom's answer was, I don't really agree. For me, for Saka to be world class, I do this for every world class player. I believe you have to be the best player or the top two player to a Champions League winning team yeah. or a Premier League winning team. You do that, fair enough. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a flowers. You're world class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fine, yeah. that's your standard, and that's good. And I, like know what? That. I, think, I think what Kate said that's earlier again, everyone's got a different agenda because I don't even think that's world class because you can. You could be the best right back in your team that wins the Champions League, but not even be in the top 10 right backs in the world. Like, I, I'm not, and that's what I think the issue here is, is that everyone's got a different, the debate needs to be what makes world class. Mm -hmm. But the problem yeah. is nobody really wants to debate that because once it's, again, what people don't like in football conversations, and I proved it earlier, is when, they, when there was a specific set of metrics are put out, everyone shits their pants because then they can't agend. No, and we will have to agend. That's a bit of content to do there over the international break. What, what, but, but we've actually done it, we've done it on the terrace, and we've done it about four or five years ago. We can do it again, and everybody yeah. hates it because then once everyone agrees on that's the parameter, everyone goes crap because now I can't squeeze my guy in, or I have yeah. to include this yeah. person I don't like. Mm -hmm. People don't like there to be. That's why some people don't like stats because as soon as your subjectivity is taken away, some people start to flap. They really do. But there we go. Um, I was going to ask as well. We have got a lot of super, more super chats to get through, but I, I did want to ask because I want to ask a question about um, the Zerbi actually to the panel. But um, very quickly, cons uh, Ben White done deal signing um, a new contract to Arsenal. How how happy are you about that? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a player I want to keep in the books. Um, I think this season he showed a lot more. I think he's he's been a lot better this season. I think. Listen, I'm not saying he wasn't bad last season. He was good last season, but I think this season, yeah, he's been good. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. I think he's I think he's been a good player for us this season so far. Uh, obviously, he was really good um, in the last couple of games as well. He's showing consistency. Uh, I think people <laughs> don't like him because uh, of all the stuff about he doesn't watch football. He doesn't do all these things that footballers should do. But listen, at the end of the day, he's consistent. Uh, he, he does the job for us. And it's quite funny. You know, people do say, you know, how, how does he manage, you know, somehow get his way into an England team? The reason I don't think Ben White's talked about as much is is because he never does anything wrong, in my opinion. The only thing I would criticise him at times is 
He can when it's one on ones with a player. I always whenever I'm watching the game on the telly, where any Arsenal game, it's a one on one. It's Ben White. I'm like, stick a leg out, just stick a leg out, put a tackle in, and he doesn't. He keeps backing off, backing off, backing off. But going forward, he's great when he's the overlapping runner. I'm not too sure. I'm not. I'm not too. You know, I'm one of his biggest fans when he goes inverted. I'm, I'm one of them ones who I'm not the biggest fan of it. But overlapping, he's great. I'm happy that him and Saka work together as a pair very well. Um, yeah, he's obviously wanted at Arsenal still by, by Arteta, and, and I'm happy with it. So, yeah, hopefully more performances like that to come and can't say any more. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I want to throw this out to the Chelsea and, and, and the fans on the panel. And um, and Paddy, there's a big story that's gone around today that both your clubs in the summer, from the Times, so relatively credible, stating that you're both going to be fighting out for the Zerbi in the summer. Um, I know that obviously Alonso's number one choice, but... There are lots of contrary reports. Some say in that he might go to uh, Bayern Munich. It does feel like Chelsea are looking at, uh, sorry, Liverpool are looking at him as a second choice. W- would you be happy with the Zerbi at, at, at Liverpool, Paddy? Congratulations to Chelsea. You can have him. Yeah. No, you, continue, you continue your Brighton rebuild. Absolutely not. I'm sorry. The Zerbi, he won a, won a league with, in Ukraine, a couple of dodgy jobs in Italy. You know, he played good football for Brighton, but no, he is not a Liverpool-level manager. He screams and stinks of Chelsea. Absolutely. If he was our manager, I would I would be sick in my mouth. It's Xabi Alonso or Bust for me or Ruben Amorim. Absolutely not the Zerbi. He is not for me. Uh, Why? Why not? Why? The words oh, out my mouth. For starters, for me with, with the Zerbi. Hold on, hold on, CB. I want to see what Paddy, why Paddy's saying that. Why Paddy? Why is it not for you? He, he hasn't proven himself. He doesn't have the pedigree required to manage a club like Liverpool. Simple as that, I'm at all. Good. He's won. I'm he's won. He's won a, a Shakhtar. He's won a league with Shakhtar or a cup in Ukraine. A couple of poor jobs in Italy. Yeah, he had or Brighton firing really well, but ultimately he was building on what Graham Potter had already built. You know, exactly. there's no guarantee he would have done mm-hmm. that without Potter's you know groundwork. I think he's a solid manager, plays nice fo- nice football, but he's not done enough to get a job like Liverpool at all. I agree. It's, Same a, it's big boots to fill as well. It's big boots to fill. With Chelsea yeah. because he, other than the Ukrainian league that he's won, he's won the Syria Lega Pro, which is basically the Papa John's Cup version, like the Italian <laughs> version of the Papa John's Cup. That for me, Chelsea heritage, other than the obviously the Lampard hire during the transfer um, ban that we had, um, Potter lately, we go for the managers who have won things and who have a pedigree, but you know what I'm saying, won at least a top five league. Oh, you know, it's not that. Wait, wait, CB, Pochettino's not that. But Pochettino's won a league in the but, top no, five. No, you're not going to try to count. You're not, you're not going to count his tenure at PSG. We're not going to count that. <laughs> that, that is that a top horrible. five league. That is a top five league. It, it was a horrible tenure. And they're, they're not even a top five league, I think. Last year, they were top... They were When he was there, it was, he was defined uh, as the sixth uh, first league. When he was there, it was a top five league. Like, for me, it's he simple. Chelsea, in, terms of, in terms of the Zerbi, the Zerbi, I've got his, his Premier League record here. He's played 60 matches. Yeah. He's won 25. He's drawn 16. And lost 19. So he's lost, he's drawn and lost more games than he's won, and he's conceded 111 goals in 60 games. Now, Chelsea, we may have seen much of it this season, but even under Graham Potter, we are a sound defensive team. Our identity lives off of defense first. I don't want to, I don't care for the pretty attractive football. That's not the Chelsea I grew up on. We sit back, we you know what I'm saying, we get you on a counter-attack, we win ugly. That's Chelsea heritage. I don't care for the whole tiki taka hipster zone 15 3 1 3 build. I don't care. I was, wait, I was waiting for that buzzword. That's, they love that. They love that one when it comes to the Zerbi, the hipster one. I see that all the time. Yeah, bring, bring me a trophy. That's all it is for me. I don't think the Zerbi is of this ilk. But in my so do you, opinion, what, who, who do you want? Who do you want for this for this squad of players then, CB? Let me ask you that. So in terms of Chelsea, these squad of players, they are all god awful. None of the players are really good. I'll give maybe two or three players. I want to bend them a lot of them and you start again. Three players. We need you. I'll, we have a I'll, I'll keep a Casado. No, I'll keep a Casado. I'll keep a Gusto and I'll keep a Palmer. Palmer's our best player and he shouldn't be the best player on our team. That shows the quality of us as a whole. In terms of the manager situation, I don't believe the manager is the main problem. The problem is the recruitment and the squad. And then in terms yeah, of everything, manager, everything, I just can't believe what, that all what, that money spent. You know, CB, 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 what, what, what you're not going to do, you're not going to try to agree now. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, you've called the same team the fourth best team in the league. So 
Wait, what? No, I'm trying, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me slow this down. Let me slow this down a minute. Let me slow this down. So this is where people go for Don. So anyone that's new to watching is the way he will ride out against Saka and but puts all these massive tangibles on him. This man will sit there, barring Gallagher. And will defend every single player like like they came out of his nutsack if they if they were a Chelsea Blue. It's a, mad, it's a madness. That's just, that's just a lie because I came on the other day and I was getting onto Enzo. Saying that another, another no Terry, yeah. Go, I will go back to the tapes and I will show you every single fan count where I've criticized these players. Yeah, and Enzo Enzo is a top two worst signing in Chelsea history. I put him. See what I'm talking about? This is what we're, what we're doing. With. Enzo Fernandez. At least for Enzo Torres, a big moment for us. I saw okay, with my baby. own eyes, you know, our fan base, this is the, like my main issue, why I even started doing content in the first place is because I noticed the standards of my club were dropping right before my very eyes with stuff like Enzo is world class, is the system, this yeah, and that. What is this based on when he had 12 league games at Benfica, six months removed from River Plate prior to joining us for 100 million? You could use the World Cup, them six games where he got carried by Messi. But what is Amrabat doing today? What's he Unahi doing Messi. today? What's Goncalo Ramos doing today? Even Alvarez, who performed well in the World Cup. I don't use a World Cup as a parameter to judge a world-class player. So when our fan base is running around saying, sack Poch, because this random that we bought, who was six months removed from River Plate, and then they say, oh, he cooked against Potter. Um, he cooked under Potter and Lampard. He had two wins in that span. Then two wins was one against, once against a relegated Leicester side, and the other was a reverse picture against Dortmund where he cost us in the first leg. So if what are we really judging this? How, how did he cost us? How did, how did he cost us in the first leg? How did he cost us? Have you watched Eddie Emmy's goal? When he was one on one against him and he put you, 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 you tell me what players are catching at the Emmy. That guy's got like 99 oh, pace. Oh, oh, you brother. tell me how many players are catching oh, at the Emmy. That guy came out and said, Dayo, 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 you saw his interview after. He said he is fufu. He said he is fufu. That's what he said after, yeah. And that's why he's running like that. No, don't you now? Now it's what I'm saying, Terry. This is what I'm saying. People, people, people like UCB like to run away from the situation that we're in. Yeah, we ain't gonna be able to dump all these players. This is the problem that we're in. I agree with you. The recruitment from top to bottom, yeah. The owners have made mistakes, Poch has made mistakes, the players have made mistakes, everyone is to blame, yeah. But what we need to deal with right now is who is the manager that can work best with these players. And for me, like I said before, I think Deserby, the players that we've got, the profile players that we've got. I think he suits them, bro. Yeah, number one, number one. You will not be improving on the deserve. I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let, let, let them finish, guys. Let, let, let me land my point. Yeah, clock, uh, see, I'm about to say clock now because this is the type of football, football that Poch has got us trying to play. He's got us trying to play Liverpool football. The other day against Newcastle, my man had Gallagher playing left wing. Yeah, killing him playing left wing and just leaving a big hole in the midfield. We're playing ping pong football. Ping pong football. Yeah. If you remember the start of the season, CB, most well, of the games... Kunku, when when Kunku comes back, you guys are going to be balling. That's what she said. Nah, nah. Oh, exactly. Gosh, exactly, Dio. 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 said that. Dio. Dio. That's you exactly said, what you said. said at the beginning of the yeah. season. You said that, Dom. No, no, no. no that, I didn't not say exactly that. I didn't what say that. You said when you said when you, you, I didn't say you said, that. Yes, you yes, said our players yes, are injured. Yes, our players are injured. We have a lot oh, of injuries right now. Hold see, on, don't 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 do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be right. This is just a lie. There's video out there. There's video out there. Hold on. There's video out there of you saying this. We have a lot of injuries when they come back. We haven't seen the 11 that Poch wants to play. Did you see how they played in preseason? You met these are your words. I'm Wait, quoting you. In preseason, hold on, hold on, hold on. You said this is what you said. He's twisting one. No, so, no, 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 no. I've come, no, come on in consistently. No, 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 you, no. you cut me off here. Let me finish what I was saying. You cut me off here. Yeah? Consistently, I've come on the terrace here, yeah? weekly, after, if, as long as I'm not at games. I've spoken about this manager. Running away to, uh, to to injuries as an excuse. I've I've constantly said we have had more than enough to be winning more games. I haven't run away to that excuse once. The You've only, only reason why. Recently, I did, hold on. No, no, what happened, bro? I've said it throughout the whole season. You wasn't season. seeing that in November. Back. You wasn't seeing that in Terry, November and October. Terry, we were Terry, screaming Terry. on the terrace. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Terry. You wasn't saying hold on, that. Hold on, hold on, Jules. Hold on, Jules. When I was coming out here and saying, why is this guy playing Levi Cole at left back when we've got fucking Ian Matson over there? Why is he playing Ben Chiu at left wing when we've got Mudrik or Sterling that can play on, over that side? I've spoken about this guy and how he keeps running away to injuries. Oh, when, no, it, when the club, hold on, hold on, hold on, CD. When the club kept talking about how, oh, you know, they think that we could be in a better position because of Nkuku. I said, who the hell do they think Nkuku is? I said, Nkuku is not messy. Yeah. And we don't even know how fit this guy is going to be. So no one's going to try to tell me. I was saying, oh, yeah, when Nkuku comes back, everything's going to turn around. Nkuku, bro, is a piece of, of, a, of a broken puzzle right now because Pochettino doesn't even know how to use the guy. Right. No wonder he's, he's injured again. Do you know what I'm saying? So no one can try to tell me I've come on here and said, oh, we're losing these games because we have all these injuries. I've literally said, Poch can't no. use that, bro. No, you, 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 you know what it is, Don? You, you, you have 
definitely moaned about the positions that he put people in. But I would say with a certain air of with a certain air of certainty, it's an awful sentence, with a with a large degree of certainty that you have made comments to the effect of uh, when Lavi is back, when Nkunku starts in that 10 role, yes. when a player is in the ground, that you, 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 have, you haven't quite used these words, so excuse the words. I'm just saying a ballpark. Yeah. You've sort of said, when they're back, I think this team... Yeah, but let me... And you've consistently rated... You've consistently rated players like Enzo and Caicedo that have consistently mm -hmm. this season dropped stinkers. And I know you've put a lot of that blame on the system and how the manager's set up and the players that are out, yeah. of, out of position. So to be fair with you, 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 you've criticised the manager in some areas, but you have defended a lot of your players a lot. And you have predicted, you know, you sort of said, you know, you, you sat there and said things like Mahalo Mudrik, better than um, Martinelli. I, 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 we're not doing this again. We're not we doing did. this again. But anyway, Terry, 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 yeah. yeah. When, when I've, spo when I've spoken about, when, when I've spoken about Labias and Nkukus, yeah, that's in the context of me giving this guy free strikes. Free strikes. People kept asking me, people kept asking me, yeah, oh, why, why are you giving Poch free strikes? I said, the main reason why is because I can't ignore how many injuries he's got. But the final straw for me was when we played Wolves, my man had Nkuku starting, Caicedo starting, Palmer starting, Enzo starting, Sterling starting, and we got bopped 4-2 at home, bro. So I was like, nah, that's enough. That's, that's you've got, you've got, you've got, to tell you that yeah. these players are not what you think they are. Bro, you, bro, bro, Let's CB respond from it, Don. So let him respond, please. Sorry. Just to respond to a lot of the things you've said from, from the beginning. That's the first thing you said, that based on these players, and who can get the best tune out of them, you want to go to the Zerbi. That was the first thing you said. I just, didn't even land my point on the Zerbi. I didn't even land my point on the Zerbi. Just jump in. We have a problem of novices. Our team is full of novices from the very top. Our ownership have never run a football club before. They've, they've, they've taken over Strasbourg. They're doing protests over there as well. They're not as well. It's unran, like, it's ran terribly from the very top. You look at the board. We've hired a Win Stanley and a Lawrence Stewart to handle our recruitment and a sporting direction of our club. Them man have never had a trophy between any of them. That's number two. No, it's novice. You look at the manager, he has never won in England before. You can call him crash the manager. I'm not very, like, I don't like Poch just because he's Tottenham. Based on what he's actually doing for the job, I don't think there's much he could do having a side of children. Between our squad, only Thiago Silva and Sterling have played over 100 league games. So basically, yeah, you're taking away, you're taking away all, you're taking away all no, blame from this clown who keeps making I'm basic mistakes. No, no, that's not the case at all. That's not the case at all. It is, it is the case. That's what I'm hearing. No matter, what what you you with in, no matter what manager you put in, if unless it's the Klops or the Pep Guardiola's of this world, you are okay, not winning. Okay. You're not challenging for a title. With these uh, games. Guys, I I respect good. that. Great debate. Um, I want to, I just want to do a few more of these super chats here. Before the end, it says, uh, so going by Condon's logic, Mudrik is better than Martinelli, and Martinelli is better than Saka. So Mudrik is better than Saka. Am I, what am I hearing? I, ne I never said Mudrik's better than Martinelli once. So Yeah, but you, you okay, yeah, you've never, used those, you've never used those words, but let's ask the question again. Be honest, Don. If you had the opportunity now, get rid of Mudrik, but you keep Martinelli, or you don't get Martinelli and you keep Mahalo Mudrik, what are you doing? I am not swapping him. I've told you a million and one times, bro. Well, again, I, again, that for me is code for, I think he, you... you no, wait, it's not. Just, I'm giving you my reason Don, why. I'm Don, giving Don, you my reasons Don, why. Don, but let me ask you this question. Don, Don, would you swap Mudrik for a player that you thought is better or will be better than him? Yeah. If, if, if for, for, for example, if there was a... I'm trying to think of a winger right now. That's up there. So Martinelli, you, Martinelli, oh, yeah, Martinelli, yeah, Martinelli, oh, Martinelli, oh, Martinelli, oh, hold on, hold on. Martinelli, Martinelli, why are you not acting? Wait, hold on. Why are you not acting as if Martinelli's name up? I don't get it. Like, Martinelli no one is, is nobody is, is nobody is gone. Like, yeah, but Mudrik is shit, though. That's fair. <laughs> but again, if you, but if you, Ukraine bald is not him. Give me a different option, bro. If you're telling me Mbappe, I'm swapping it. If you're saying you were swapping for somebody better or who will be better, and you wouldn't swap him for Martinelli, that is you saying you think Mudrik. Is better in one way. Shape or that's what you're saying. Just say it. This is this is the fight. This is this is the final time I'm gonna say this now. I've already told you why I am not swapping Mudrik. For me, Mudrik, I, I've seen good parts in him and I've seen bad parts in him. The good parts I've seen, I can see there's a player in there, bro. But he has not had the same level of opportunities that Martinelli has had. People think Martinelli and Saka became the players that they are with, with no game time, bro. These guys have been playing week in week out now for a minute. We're nearly out of time. I'll rephrase the question really simply. Rephrase, with, rephrase. The right, with, with the right amount of game time, do you think Mahalo Mudrik is better than Martinelli? 
You, you, I try to put words in my mouth. Like, no, that's a good question. That's a good question. That is a good question. That's a very good question. I think, I think, I, I think to answer your question, I think if Mudrik um, gets more game time, the way, he, like I said, um, here and there, we've seen him pass at Leeds the other day, Newcastle, he came on. If he starts to get more game time, I think he'll start to develop and he can he can reach the same sort of levels Martinelli can reach. But can he be better than Martinelli? Do you reckon? I think he can be. I think he can oh, be better yeah. than Martinelli. Yeah, I think he's got oh, more yeah. to his game. I think he's got if more he's to his game. If he's got to reach Martinelli's levels, that means he's not better than him on Nini's exactly. level. I was about to say that. Sorry, George. George, I'm, I'm not going to say... I'm talking I'm about Martinelli. I'm just going to say... I'm just going to say... I'm just going to say... John, John, do you know it's a lot easier? Just say I you think he's better, and it ends the conversation. It's right off die Chelsea, right? Hold on, you know, you know, you know, you know what? I'm sorry to interject, mate, because I'm I'm really running out of time personally here. There's a super chat here. There's Terry. If stats are so important, why is Paul Scholes better than Lampard? Or when Lampard almost doubles his Premier League assists, it's a really good question. Like I said, that element when it comes to who is the better attacking midfield player, I would go with Frank Lampard. But then you have to look at the other statistics. If you break down the control of the game, the passing accuracy in the middle, the breaking line passes accuracy, et cetera, et cetera. There are multiple stats, loss of possession in dangerous areas. All these things are key to being a midfield controller, which Paul Scholes was. I'm pretty convinced they'll be better than what Frank Lampard's were. So for me, stats will back up your eye test. You can't say a player is an amazing passer when he's got 72% passing accuracy, barely breaks lines, only passes backwards and doesn't create chances. There's there's no factual evidence behind it. It's just based on aesthetics. And as we all know, St. Maximum, aesthetic, St. Maximum was aesthetically very pleasing, but it was no end product. So, you know, he's, he's a lingerie shop without a window. A uh, world-class player equals top one or two, uh, three positions. Uh, not hard, guys. But Spencer, not everyone sees it that way, but I, I hear no, you. Because the bar's on the floor right now. In, in yeah, Saka has... Saka has 12 GA against a traditional top six since the start of last season and has uh, seven Champions League GA this campaign. Don just spewing nonsense. No one said he doesn't. He hasn't turned up against the big teams. Though. No one said that once. We doing it. Uh, playing Barcelona 10 years ago, you worried about Messi and a few more players or a lot of bloody players. Uh, playing uh, Arsenal today, you worry about their system and not Saka. No world-class players at Arsenal as of yet, is what Micro uh, Macro says here. Thank you, bro. Big um, com uh, contribution here from um, Abu. Thank you very, very much. He says, listen, Arsenal, we have been on uh, in the mud for years. Damn, guys, is real Don is, re hitting re is real hitting you guys uh, that we are here to stay for a long time. Get used to this fella, lol. Good panel, though. Keep it up, Terry. Always at the best. And yeah, honestly, tonight's been one of my favorite panels ever. I loved it. Uh, this truth, sorry, the truth is that even if, according to Don, Saka is not world-class enough, there is enough factor that Rice pockets Chelsea's whole midfield. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, that's I, 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 I wanted Rice for, for years, so you can't yeah, do that. I agree with that. Morocco got the semi uh, got to the semi final. So does that mean they didn't have a successful World Cup? All these wafflers are messing up my favorite show. Now, Clint, I think they're adding to it. They're adding some garnish to it. I love it. We need some challenge, man. I, I can't stand shows that are bland. The irony is, Dom uh, puts Ch uh, puts these Chelsea players who haven't done nothing um, at such a pedestal, but yet criticizes the players that are sitting at the top of the league. <laughs> You see, Tom, yeah, Tom, just, I read that out looking at George's face the whole time, see if he smiled, and he did. He did. It's, it's, it's hilarious because start of the season, I said, I said, we ain't gonna build no cohesion, no chemistry, we won't even finish in the top six if this manager carries on. And look where we are, we're 11th in March. We're 11th in March. Enabling what the board and the ownership are doing. I'm not, I'm not in the, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the manager. What have you been watching? And start gassing up these dead players who have never proven anything and supporting their model, their recruitment model. You're enabling this mess. I'm not, I'm not supporting their model. I know you're I'm part of the fan them. base. I know I you're part of the fan base that will say Enzo. It. You think Enzo is better than Jorginho? No, Jorginho is more seasoned than him. It's so, not the so question. You, <laughs> yeah, is, is Enzo better than Jorginho? <laughs> right now, I mean, at Chelsea, no, it wasn't. Why do you have to think about this, though? It wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't. He hasn't. Well, Georgie, bro, Georgini, bro, bro, Georgini performed at a world class level for us, bro. You know, you know, if he gave such a team the squad that we had last season, we will be in a higher position. Facts, facts. The players that we have got in right now, they are up. We downgraded in every single position. We down. The only but one I'll say. Why did he take the job then? Why did he take the job then? 
Stop, stop feeling sorry for this joke of a manager, man. Stop feeling sorry for this joke of a manager. Okay, if he couldn't do the job, if he couldn't do the job, hold on, hold on. If we don't if win every cup, guys, class, guys, I'm going to stop you both there because I'm running out of time. I'm really sorry. This here says Saka is the only player in the world who gets called overrated for not playing ten out of ten every game. Every player has bad periods. I hear you on that. Uh, Arsenal fans are uh, comparing Haaland's off form versus Saka's off form being disingenuous. No, no, no they, they weren't doing that. They were comparing and saying, well, if you remove the goals, what else is there? How much does he influence games? That's the, the I think it's different because Haaland scores such a high number of goals. It's unbelievable. I think if Saka's goal levels were up by another 20, say, say 15 goals by this point, I think it'd be a very different conversation. Aya here says uh, people need to watch replays to analyze games properly against Brentford and Porto. Those two teams focused on the mid block, which is a good counter to our tactics. I agree. Uh, Don is more press resistant than Prime Busquets. Now, Don is, Don is like Teflon, bruv. He's like Teflon out here. Uh, look, I want to thank everybody that's tuned in. First of all, I want to thank our title sponsors, Match Bingo. Please go and scan the QR code or click on the link below and get signed up. It's an amazing game. Trust me, once you've played it once, you'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. Plus, you get 10 free cards per month until the end of the season if you get it done now. I want to thank all the super chatters and everyone who's hit the like button. But really importantly, obviously, you viewers are amazing. This community is brilliant, no matter what other people say about you. But I want to thank George. I want to thank Kate. I want to thank, uh, thank uh, of course, Don and um, uh, Dio. But the boys that made their debuts tonight, Paddy, CB and Cons, excellent additions to the show. Definitely going to be getting you back on because it was, it was nice and spicy tonight. I enjoyed it. Viewers, I hope you all uh, had fun for the last two hours. Back tomorrow with a live draw in the morning for the... Champions League, straight facts in the afternoon with man like Steffi. Before you go, before you go, before you go, Arsenal boys, who do you not want? Who do I want? I, on top I of my care. head, um, like hey Barcelona, come on now, let's make it spicy. You know no, no, hey no, Barcelona, no. I want Barcelona. You know, you know what? I I don't care because we're not good enough to win anything. So no, 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 what do you want me to say? Anything I say, you're going to say they're going to kill us anyway. So what? I, I <laughs> what I'll say is, but don't be surprised if we get Madrid or, Ch or City. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Madrid, Madrid or City. Do not be surprised. Listen, people, we're back with that tomorrow. Straight facts with Hassan and Staffy. A little bit later in the afternoon, uh, so because the boys have, have got stuff to do uh, during Ramadan. So it's going to be around about five o'clock, I think. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless, and I'll see you all again soon. Peace.